Thanksgiving weekend in New Orleans has a feel and flavor all its own, thanks to a tradition known as the Bayou Classic. Four decades of history and a week long of activities. This time, a game that'll send the winner to next weekend's conference title game. But the Bayou isn't just grambling in Southern playing football. It's the highly anticipated battle of the bands at halftime. Settle in, get comfortable. The 44th Bayou Classic is ready to roll. The Bayou Classic party set to continue now inside the Louisiana Superdome. Southern and Grambling ready to roll for the 44th time in the Bayou Classic. Moments ago inside the Jaguar locker room, here's what head coach Dawson Odoms had to say. When you first came, this is where you was at. In this building, in this environment. Now you seniors, you back in this building, in this environment. History repeats itself. History does repeat itself. Proud of you guys, man. I ain't got to give you no speech today. We know what time it is. We know what time it is, man. We got to clock in. Come on, man! Got to clock in. Every day. You'll fight! fight. You'll fight. fight! That's all I'm asking you to do. As long as you work your ass off. And at the end of the day, the best team going to be standing. Leave no doubt who that is. Leave no doubt. It's the Bayou Classic. Let's go have some fun. Unleash on three. One, two, three. Unleash on that ass. And welcome to New Orleans. Thanks for being with us. I'm Paul Burmeister. Well, from Michigan, Ohio State to Auburn, about Alabama, to what we're about to see in Grambling and Southern, we know the final Saturday in November always reserved for rivalries just like this. But we have two things you don't know that's coming with a rivalry. We're lucky to have two teams playing their best football at the right time. That's the end of the season. We also have significance, as you can see there. If Grambling wins for the 10th consecutive time, they play in the conference title game next week. And if Southern wins their seventh in a row, that opportunity will be theirs. Looking forward to the company in-game throughout the next four hours of Anthony Heron and also Charles Arbuckle. With a game like this and two teams playing for the title, it's no surprise. We have the two best quarterbacks, or the two highest-rated quarterbacks in the conference as well. Let's begin, Anthony, with Grambling. Uh, Devontae Kincaid is going to take the snap from behind center for Grambling. And he transferred from Ole Miss for moments like today. He's been one of the most scintillating talents we've seen in the Southwestern Athletic Conference in a number of years. He's their reigning offensive player of the year. And it's because he's got a multi-dimensional skill set. We'll take a look at a couple of the plays that happened in last year's Bayou Classic. He's got the ability to defeat the defense both within the pocket with his arm and outside the pocket with his legs. But what I believe makes him rare is for one of these dual threat quarterbacks, he protects the football at an extremely high level. He knows how to take it the distance. His head coach, Broderick Fobbs, likes him for all those reasons. Moments ago, here he is with Lewis Johnson. I would get ready for this. What has been the message, you guys, that you guys get ready to take the field today against Southern? Well, you know, we're dealing with a heck of a football team, and Coach Odoms does an exceptional job of coaching his players, and they have a lot of really good players that make a lot of great plays. So, so for us, it's about, you know, making them feel uncomfortable and, uh, and making them do other things that we do well. So uh, we focused on that, you know, the entire two weeks that we were off and, and focused on trying to make sure we're healthy and ready to go. Thanks, and we look forward to it. All right, thank you. Okay, so what Broderick Fobbs has in Devontae Kincaid, Dawson Odoms believes he has in Austin Howard. Austin Howard stepped on the Southern's campus his first year, made things happen. They were expecting this guy to do all those big things. As a senior, he is now looking to win. He won his first year, and he's outstanding. A mental playbook in his hand. You're going to see a couple of plays here that will show you that. The ability to go one way, come the other. Receiver makes a play, gets in for six. Austin Howard has the capacity to do these kind of things. He finds his open receiver. He will pick you apart if you're not there. Injured early in the year, coming back strong. Really looking forward to a great Bayou Classic game. Yeah, let's go down to Lewis Johnson for more. Well, Austin, you're on record saying that you're only as good as your last performance. So what would it mean to come out here in your last shot at the Bayou Classic to lead this team to a win and on to the SWAC title game? Oh, man, it'll mean everything, you know, just for the Jaguar Nation. You know, uh, they travel from near and far to see their kids play, to see their relatives play. And, I mean, we want big family. So, I mean, to get this win, it'll mean everything for them and for me. Good luck today. Thank you. And the table is set. The Jaguars taking the field. The Tigers... Coming out to follow, and what's next is the 44th annual Bayou Classic with a shot at the title on the line.
Welcome back to New Orleans. Grambling and Southern about to get underway with the Bayou Classic. Time now for the National Anthem. Let's go to Superdome Public Address Announcer Mark Romick. And now to honor America, the veterans of all of our armed forces, and the men and women in uniform, would everyone please rise, remove your hats, and join in the singing of our National Anthem, performed by Marine Corps Band New Orleans. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Corps Band New Orleans and the United Dome. States Army Cadet Command. 44th Annual Bayou Classic coming up. Grambling coming in. There's a look at Southern. Number seven, Austin Howard well, is the quarterback, the most experienced quarterback in Southern history. Be taking on a Grambling team that comes in with nine consecutive wins. Devontae Kincaid, quarterback for the Grambling Tigers. And guys, for everyone who saw Grambling win last year, impressively 52-30, to 30, Anthony, how was this team, although it's still very good, how was it different than last year's? Throughout the regular season, they haven't been quite as explosive as last year. Devontae Kincaid as a quarterback is still protected the football at a high level, not as experienced at wide receiver. So that's a big difference with the way, even as he goes to those second and third reaction moments, Charles, they haven't had quite as many explosive plays. When we talked to Coach Fobbs, that was the one thing he said on the field. We also, after the Arkansas Pine Bluff game, we were struggling. We had to find a way to get things going. Once they did, they were in much better position. And both quarterbacks, guys, without some major pieces of their offenses from last year. If you're Austin Howard, you don't have your leading receiver and Willie Quinn in program history, the all-time leading rusher in Leonard Tillery, and also Devontae Kincaid without without uh, Charles Rod or without Chad Williams, who had 90 catches a year ago. Went on in the National Football League, so he's taking his talents on to the next level. So both quarterbacks have had a few things to get over. Austin Howard had an injury. He had to battle a bit during the season as well. So he only missed two games, but there was about a month after that where it still didn't feel like in talking to Dawson Odoms where he was quite back to normal yet, but we're going to see the healthiest version of Austin Howard we've seen all year today. Three short stature receivers making big plays down the stretch. That six-game win streak, it changed his team, and you can see why they're playing at such a high level now. Those three short receivers for Thunder for Southern, Jamar Washington, Kendall Catalan, and Cameron McKay. All listed at five, nine, and under. Yeah, a couple of them are some generous heights. <laughs> but no, it's all, it doesn't matter because what, it, what they can do is they want to get them matched up on safeties and create some issues with those safeties. All right, turn it around. Turn around this way. Come around this way. Grambling is going to toss. Choice of second half. Southern will receive the football. So the Jaguars, led by Dawson Odoms, will get us started here on offense after they receive the kick. And amazing what Dawson Odoms has done his fifth season as the Southern head coach. 34-8 conference record. 
fifth season officially as the head coach. You can add on a sixth if you count his time as the interim head coach. He took this program over from Stump Mitchell back during the 2012 season. And 2013 on, we've seen him rebuild the Southern program in a similar fashion to what Robert Bobbs has done at Grambling State. I mean, when you think about reclamation projects, these two head coaches have just done spectacular work. And in talking to Dawson Odoms, he really feels like if it wasn't for Grambling State being in the same <laughs> division with them, then this Southern program would be going to the SWAC championship game year after year. He said that right away. He said, these are the guys that we have to get through, and we know we have to do that. I've got a senior quarterback. I've got a guy that can pull the trigger. I know what we can do. He's excited about the opportunities, such as Brock Fox as well. The Southern start of the season, knocking off South Carolina State, uh, as you guys have kind of alluded to. Took a step back there at the beginning of the season. They lost three consecutive games. Uh, they really had to find themselves on offense. You mentioned the three shorter wide receivers uh, coming into play the second half of the year. We'll get our look at them. Uh, coming up is Southern's going to have the ball first. 65th all-time meeting between Southern and Grambling. It officially became the Bayou Classic a little after that, a couple of decades later. This is the 44th annual Bayou. But they moved it here to New Orleans. Initially a two-lane stadium. Didn't have enough room in the stands to fit the popular led by senior quarterback Austin Howard. Offensively, it's an offensive line for Southern. It had a few fits and starts earlier in the season, especially from a protection standpoint. But Jeremiah Abbey at the left tackle, Dawson Odoms, his coach, calls him the brain trust of how they operate up front. Herb, Ep Herb Edwards, you mentioned Lenard Tillery earlier, Paul. Edwards has had to take over the running back position, and he's on pace to go for over 1,000 yards with a big effort today. Yeah, averaging exactly 100 yards per game coming into this one is Herb Edwards. A lot of patience not only sat behind Tillery, Anthony also sat behind Leonard Fournette in high school. First ball is first offering is intercepted by Grambling. Terrius Pouncey had one last year, and right away he's in position. There's pressure up the middle, Anthony, right away coming at him. And you can see Christmas, the area's Christmas with the pressure on the inside and it forces him into a bad decision and that's part of why the area's christmas is in line to potentially be the defensive player of the year in the southwestern athletic conference because not only does he make plays at the second level they bring him on blitzes down after down it sets up these takeaways for the grambling secondary at 26 takeaways forced by the grambling d easily number one in the southwest athletic conference one play one turnover and now here is martez carter and Devonte kincaid Carter motions out of the backfield. And a penalty marker is down. But you got to play clean in game play right there. Man. False start. 16 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Two first down. The Tiger. Tiger's turnover margin, guys, right now an incredible plus 20. They just find ways. They practice it. They know how to go after the football. And when it's in the air, they attack it. Eerily similar to the start of last season's Bayou Classic. Southern actually had a great drive going last season. Austin Howard fumbled on the one-yard line, second possession of that game, threw an interception. So the takeaways get Grambling going. Kincaid coming in for the second year in a row at the Bayou as the number one rated quarterback in the swag. Empty backfield sets up the screen to Daryl Clark, cuts it back. And makes it out to the 36-yard line. Gerald Clark had an innate ability to make him miss right there. And just get the ball out. Kincaid, Tempo, throws the ball there. Make one guy miss. I call it by your ability. By your <laughs> ability is what he showed. <laughs> Sets up very well. 44th Bayou Classic. Clark, the leading receiver for Grambling, now has 32 catches on the year. Brings up second down 11. First carry for Carter off the left side. That's a first down and in zone. Martez Carter inside the 20-yard line of the Grambling offense on the move. He was brought down by Montavious Gaines. DeAndre Sims was able to get out after snapping the football. Lead block on the pull. Martez Carter, they call him Mr. Excitement on game day. The patience he showed in the backfield, excellent cut. Gaines 19 there. Come right back to him, spin move. And cut down to the 16-yard line. We see already the kind of make-you-miss 
that Carter has brought down by Demario Houston. Trenton Scott has to play well on that front line. They've got to have him protect Kincaid. Martez Carter, we've already seen his explosiveness, his ability to get by you. Mr. Excitement is his nickname. Third leading rusher in the SWAC coming into this game. Remember him last year for the kick return touchdown to seal it. Takes the pitch off the left side, stumbles down to the 13-yard line. Let's take a peek now at the Southern Jaguar defense. That was a gain of three yards. Well, Aaron Tiller on that particular snap from the defensive end position did a nice job stringing the ball out lateral because he got movement at the point of attack. Contavious Preston, he's their seek and destroy linebacker. He'll always be on a mission to find the ball carrier. Danny Johnson, the best defensive back in the SWAC for the last three seasons. And the Grambling offense coming into this one, explosive and efficient. Number one of the SWAC in scoring at 32. Also the fewest turnovers with only seven. Out of the backfield, there's Carter. He gets down to the six-yard line. That's enough for a first down. So they turn first and 15 into first and goal with that gain of seven. That was a nice play by Augustine, though, sizing him up, the free safety coming up. Watch here in open field. You have to make sure you let him do all that juke and you find that middle of his belt. Anthony knows this and you go and seek him. Don't let him get by you again. <laughs> the Tigers looking to take, uh, take advantage of yet another turnover created by its defense on the very first play of the game. 27th turnover. An interception off of Austin Howard. It's now first and goal from the seven-yard line. Change of running back, or two running backs in now for Grambling. Dre Fuslier. Grambling is calling the first time out. Fuslier joins Martez Carter in the backfield. We'll come over and have a talk with Broderick Fobbs. Grambling Tiger offense knocking on the scoring door. They already have a pick. We'll see if they have a touchdown after the break. The Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. By the one place that will always be your place, Mickey D's. Opportunistic Tigers doing what they do. They just created their 27th turnover of the season. The Kevin Reynolds interception now have first and goal. Led by the top-rated quarterback in this conference, Devontae Kincaid. Has a couple of running backs with him in the backfield, Martez Carter. And also Lindemian Brooks to his left. Fakes to both, keeps it himself, and the Southern defense is there to throw him for a loss. Anthony, on that play, they went with an eagle look. The down lineman, the nose tackle covering the center, and then the, both guards covered. And then they just fly in. And actually, great play by the linebacker there coming in hard to make the play count for It's a loss of two. Aaron Tiller, you guys have talked about him already, the top playmaker on that front seven. Brings up second and goal. Kincaid on the option, keeps it himself, cuts it back. Touchdown, Tigers. At the end of this run, here's the previous play where you see penetration into the backfield from Southern. Then on this touchdown run, they're attacking the edge. After attacking the interior of the Southern defense, Devontae Kincaid calls his own number, gets laterally, gets vertically, takes it for six. He is a walk-in closet kind of guy. I mean, you, you get him in a... The ruling of a touchdown on the field is under further review. You get him in a confined area, and you think you have him, and that's, we're showing you slow motion, and it still looked like boom. <laughs> I mean, that is just great blocking up front, and they just do a nice job, and Anthony right there, boom, he's able to make people miss. Now, did he get in? Yeah, this will be interesting at the end of the play. It looks like it's Aaron Tiller who's trying to bring him down after hustling out of the stack, and it seems like Kincaid's actually laying on the body of the defender on about the two-yard line, so he's not down by rule yet. Then he rolls over and is able to get the football across the stripe. Yeah, there's a That's reason it. there was some hesitation for the call <laughs> yes. from the field, whether it was a touchdown, and a, a very good reason they're taking a look at it, as you can see. A little better look right here. Yeah, his body actually laid on the defender like Aaron, I mean, excuse me, like 
Anthony was saying, and it just gives you that ability. And you see the officials coming up to look. It took them a while. Yeah. But we have the luxury of having the ability to see it again. And having the replay review available. This is specific to the Bayou Classic. A lot of regular season games in the SWAC, this is not an option. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Anthony, I think you brought up the key point. Uh, when he was in, in initially looked like he was down, he was actually on top of a defender. And if anything would have touched down the elbow, the wrist, uh, you know, even the lower body portions, the shin, that could have been ruled down by contact. But the way he was laying on the body of Aaron Tiller, he was actually able to stay up in the air long enough for the touchdown. Seven plays, 36 yards. Kincaid with that nine-yard touchdown run following the Kevin Reynolds interception. And a textbook start for the Rambling Tigers looking to win in conference for the 25th consecutive time. Devontae Kincaid told us before the game it was key to stay calm at all times. Also helps to get into the end zone on the first drive. Rambling out to an early lead. This is how the game started. Disaster for Southern. Interception on the first play. That's Jeterius Pouncey. And the Grambling offense comes right back. Darrell Clark, reception there. Devontae Kincaid, the starting quarterback, into the end zone, barely in. Nine-yard touchdown. That's the point. Made it seven to nothing. And that's how it stands early in the 44th Bayou Classic. One of the key things there, you can see Danny Johnson, one of the defenders coming over number one. You can't overrun Kincaid. You've got to make sure you square him up. You have everybody rallying to the football. If you don't, he will make people miss. Nice ground inside the Superdome, just as you would expect for not only the history and rivalry here, but for a shot to play in the conference title game next week in Houston against Alcorn State. Danny Johnson deep. He's already accepted an invite to the Senior Bowl. The ball's play as a corner out across the 30-yard line. And now we'll see how Austin Howard responds after that 23-yard return. For more on Austin Howard, here's Lewis Johnson. Paul, imagine your first throw in this big game, and it's an interception. I watched him as he went back to the uh, bench area there, and Austin was very relaxed and calm. He spoke with his coordinator, and then he made a point to get up and walk to uh, speak to everybody on his defensive line to just give them the confidence that everything was okay, he'd be fine, so they'd be ready for this second series right now. Paul? And, Lewis, you would expect that kind of call from someone making his 44th career start, the most experienced Jaguar quarterback in the program history. They go to the ground game, and the Grambling defense is there. The number one rush defense in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, no game. And part of the way they make that happen, Lidwood Banks, in the nose position, they move him around so much. You see defenders prowling around pre-snap. <laughs> Darius Christmas also, we saw him make a play early. And Diamante Johnson, four picks on the year, three against Mississippi Valley State. Most disruptive defense in the conference. Leading in tackles for loss and sacks. And also, turnovers created. They forced the throw away there to bring up third down and long. Pressure there by Deontay Hatter. This defense will come after you, and you can see they like to pressure you. Robert Fobb said, like Nolan Richardson's defenses when he played at Arkansas, uh, when he was coaching at Arkansas, he wants to force you into bad decisions and use that for your offense. 40 yeah. minutes of hell. That's what he always <laughs> talks about on that side of the ball. Force them into a bad situation here. Third down and 10 with a defense that loves to blitz in the known passing situations. Number five to Arius Christmas is the one who gets it done most often behind the line of scrimmage. Howard with time but misfires. So the first possession ended with an interception. The second one is a three and out. But we saw pre-snap. Austin Howard was taking his time. You, you mentioned the experience he has, Paul. He was seeing the defense prowling around. He actually got the protection set well. Looked like to me, Charles, maybe he even still rushed the throw a bit. Yeah, he did. He, he looked like he was a little too juiced on that. And we talked to his defensive coordinator, Trey Oliver. He said, man, he is able to break you down. Mm. And that was one of those situations where he saw everything, just didn't execute what he wanted to. Martez Carter, the starting tailback for Grambling, back deep to receive, has four return touchdowns in his career. 
Won't have a chance to return that one. And now, guys, we've been focusing on the Grambling defense. Now it's the Southern defense that's going to have to step up and find a way to stop the Tiger O. They're going to have their hands full. And Devontae Kincaid, we think back to last season. He transferred from Ole Miss, and a big part of the reason was he wanted to be closer to his mother, who had a stroke from the previous season. He becomes a starting quarterback, wasn't even able to participate in spring football. So then he goes into the fall. The first time he's able to step onto the field is on the road against a Power 5 opponent in Arizona. 15 out of 19 in that game. They had the lead before he got hurt. And talking to folks out at Pac-12 and in Arizona in particular, they said this kid almost beat him. They were <laughs> really worried with how well he played. Steps up here, shows you a little bit of that quickness, but goes down in the backfield. And almost got back to the line of scrimmage for the Southern D. That's Calvin Lunkins. The defensive line has to have multiple pass rush. Yeah. A, you come down in the zone, and Anthony, you know this. Then you have to follow them up after this. You want your D lineman coming up to make sure they stop it. That's going to be the recipe. It's got to be the guys up front. When you bring too many additional bodies, you leave yourself open for the big play. Kincaid to Clark. First down, Grambling. His second catch of the afternoon out to the 48-yard line. This is what I was impressed with that I watched early, his arm. He gets the ball out really quick. He makes decisions, and then his receivers, it gives them a chance to go and make yards after catch. Gains 14. We mentioned Chad Williams had 90 catches last year. His top four receivers this year combined for 92. Spreading it around quite a bit more and just floats that one away. I like what I'm seeing early in the game. We saw Aaron Tiller from Southern's defense there as an individual up front. Tiller's had a pretty big start to the day here. He's got consistent penetration going. Will the rest of his teammates up front be able to continue playing at that level now that the field position does ind indicate the Grambling's already in scoring position? First incomplete pass there for Kincaid. Comes in on an awfully efficient roll. Six consecutive games. Over 60%. With Carter out to the 49-yard line to bring up third down and long. That's the one thing you're going to have to do. When Carter runs the football, don't let him get five, six, seven, eight yards. Stop him right there. Nice job by Tiller and the rest of his gang of getting there and making sure they wrap him up. He has improved not only as a run stopper, he's always had the ability with his moves in the pass rush game, but he's gotten a lot better against the run as well. Jaguars rush four. Plenty of time for Kincaid. Steps up. And that's going to be just enough for another grambling first down. There's that arm talent you were talking about, Charles. The thing is, the pocket's so clean, he can climb it. He can see all the window available to him. And when he's got that, he can deliver these kind of strikes. He doesn't have to be this big statue X 250 pounder. He's got that kind of arm talent. Got to stop those flood routes where you have different levels, and he's able to find the receiver in the second level. That receiver, Caleb Salmon, gain of 10, moves the chains. It's first down and 10. Can't get to him in the backfield, and here he goes around the right side. Great decision, and then the quickness to follow a gain of nine. It looks like everybody else is moving at one speed, and then he's moving at another. He's calm, but when it's time to go, he's gone. And if you don't get around him and rally him up with a couple of folks, this is what he does to you. It's so frustrating for a defense where you feel like there's been great coverage yeah. on the back end, and then you still have a talent like Devontae Kincaid that can eat up chunk yardage. Get used to that. We've already seen him with a nine-yard touchdown run to cap the first drive. Nine yards there, and he has six or more carries in every game but one this season. And you can see the Southern defense substituting so they can get their linemen in because you got to chase this guy. And as Anthony would tell you, Gramlin is taking their second time out. Can make the middle of the first quarter feel like the middle of the third quarter. <laughs> you do too much of that. Early in the Bayou Classic and the Tigers with a seven-point lead. Premier League mornings tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Beautiful morning here in New Orleans for the annual Bayou Classic Parade. Music and parades all over downtown New Orleans today. And inside the Superdome, the 44th annual Bayou Classic, thanks to an early interception and a Kincaid touchdown run. Rambling on top, 7 to nothing. second down one coming up here. From the Southern 31-yard line. They'll play action. 
Plenty of time. Looking deep. And it'll be third and one. Good coverage there by Demario Houston, one of the Shelby, North Carolina kids. They got a couple of kids from North Carolina because the staff was at AT. But nice job of having coverage. Not a very well thrown ball by Kincaid. Fortunately for him, no one can touch it. Third one, three backs behind Kincaid. And gives off to the right side. Going to be awfully close. And that's Jordan Jones, who is officially a tight end with the carry. Picks up two, and that's a first down. That was interesting before the game. Anthony and I were talking to Coach, and he said, we're going to move him to fullback next year. We want him on the field more. He can make plays, and his best position long term is probably at the fullback position. I know you're a big fan of, of Jones, too. What is yeah. it you love about his game so much? I like what he, he's done done a nice job blocking if you're going to move the fullback you have to block but also in seam routes and corner routes he does a really nice job of catching the football averaging 22 yards per catch on his 13 catches so far southern defense great job bringing down carter behind the line of scrimmage and that's tyron nash meeting him first seen a lot of movement in the game and different from the grambling defense southern when they move pre-snap when they stem it's normally called by trey oliver Roderick Fobbs. They don't normally have as much pre-snap movement as you see from the Tigers. A Southern defense coming off its best performance of the season. 33-7 win last time out over Texas Southern. They gave up only 184 yards of total offense. Well, what it does is offensive linemen have a count. And then when they see that movement, they almost get thrown off. And that's why there's so much penetration there. Second down 12. Kincaid out to his right. Little spin move. Even when he's brought down in the backfield. Impressive parts to the run. Brought down by Champion. There's a collective sigh if you're Southern when you see Calvin Lunkins come in free and you think, oh, he has him. He gets around him, but you've got to have Aaron Tiller and other guys chasing him down in order to bring him down. Brought down there for a loss of three. Big down now for the Southern defense. Third down and 14. You see they've moved over the nose position. There's Tiller in the middle now. The best pass rush to put them over the center. Empty backfield. Three wide outs to the left to Kincaid. And here we go again. Moves outs and fires incomplete. So with the Southern offense failing to gain a yard so far in this game, the defense comes through. See them spy him a little bit and make sure they can keep an eye on him and not allow him to get comfortable. Right there, Kincaid wanted to get that ball off but couldn't quite get it to his receiver. It's been a, a fairly good blend, I'd say, so far from Southern's defense of some three-man pressure but then bringing additional guys, some blitzes with five- and six-man pressure also. But situationally, they're not giving Devontae Kincaid a steady diet of anything. With his heels on his own 10-yard line, number one is Danny Johnson. And that will be a 14-yard net after the 34-yard punt. Austin Howard, see if the third possession is a charm because they haven't gained a yard yet. Welcome back to New Orleans. A lot of zeros involved with Southern quarterback number seven. Zero points, yes, but how about zero yards? They've only run four plays. First was an interception, then they went three and out. See if they can finally get something going here. Six minutes left in the first quarter. Paul Burmeister, Anthony Heron, Charles Arbuckle, and on the sideline, Lewis Johnson. There's the first yards for Southern. Not many, though. Herb Edwards right up the middle. Gained a couple. And it'll bring up second down and seven. Second down and six. Going up against the Grambling defense that's created. It's really been the most disruptive defense in the conference by far. Number one in turnovers, number one in sacks and tackles for loss. Already plus one in the turnover game today. Howard stands in and fires. And that's his first completion to Kendall Catalan. 
One of his three freshman wideouts gained a six. Paul, oh, you can see the left tackle and the left guard making sure they identified where the pressure was going to come to allow Austin Howard that time to complete that pass and pick up the first down. A little smattering of applause here for that first first down. Howard keeps it himself. Slides out near another first down. That would be a gain of eight. And fooled everybody on that aggressive Tiger D. And now we're seeing some tempo from Southern. They won't use it as consistently as Grambling does, but they've got it in their bag. Less than 10 seconds in between plays there, but the Grambling defense ready. Gain of one for Edwards. In this chess match, what the tempo does now for Southern, you won't see as much movement pre-snap from Grambling because they can't do the check with me, get to the sideline. They have to declare their gap responsibility more immediately. Backup running back in for the Jaguars. Number nine is Devon Ben. <laughs> They were so caught, ready to go. <laughs> Offensive linemen know that it's going to happen. We got the shift going, and defense says, oh, we're going to fire off. And as soon as they do, they may call this against the offense, but it looks like it should be offsides on the defense. Oh, you tight ends. Yeah. <laughs> You're shifting. Offside, defense, 95 with contact. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. We call it trading those guys, so they're going to move them over. And whenever you do that, sometimes those – antsy defensive linemen are ready to go and they're big guys they're not dainty guys they're big guys and they're ready to go <laughs> ready to get after something first down and 10 from the 45 there's some of anthony's favorite shifting couple of tight ends moving from right to left and howard again keeps it himself second time we've seen that play in the last three around the left side Brought down by Rockwell, but that's a gain of nine. Guys, remember, we, we heard this. The running game has to be key, and you can see when that defensive end comes in hard, Austin Howard pulls that ball out, and he's able to go by. He's not Devontae Kincaid on the hoof, but he certainly can move. Now inside of Grambling territory, penalty markers come in. He looks like he's fully healthy now as well. Illegal substitution, defense number 42, five-yard penalty, second down. Just like that, guys. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. The Southern offense has the Grambling defense on its heels. Look at Grambling pre-snap. They're trying to figure out as Southern trades sides that shift. Now Grambling trying to re-engage where they're going to line up. And this drive, they started that and they're scoring their counts off. Now it's the inside give to Ben, just across the 40-yard line, game one. And Anthony, we've seen Howard keep it on that play twice now on this drive, and maybe uh, knowing very well how aggressive the ends are for Grambling, seeing something they could take advantage of. We've seen two of the bigger rushing efforts of Howard's career have come in the Bayou Classic, 56 yards a couple of years back, 32 yards last season. So his rushing numbers don't indicate how mobile he actually is. Ben motions out to his right. There Ben is wide open across the 35-yard line. And down to the 32 near another first down. This was a really nice job by Austin Howard of holding the defense inside. You're going to see him hold his eyes, see his eyes, and at the last second he goes outside. He knows where the receiver is, which is the running back, Ben, coming out of the backfield. But that holding of the eyes makes that defense stay where they are, and then you get the ball to him and you pick up the first down. It just delays the pursuit of that fast-flowing, grambling defense and gives the running lane outside for a few extra yards. Gain of eight for the first down. More shifting this time from an offensive tackle. And here comes Ben around that right side. Cuts it back inside the 30 or the 25-yard line. Yeah, it's a gain of six on first down. They were really lucky because they almost had two guys moving. <laughs> and they, they were really lucky here. See, it was Jeremiah yeah. Abbey <laughs> trading from left to right. <laughs> And he's the one who seals the edge. That's why they call him the brain trust. Not only physically dominant, but mentally. He's the guy who can handle best some of these trades and shifts we're seeing happen. The shifting and the pace and some confusion for the Grambling defense while Southern is on the move. We talked about Austin Howard's capability in this play, but he knows it. And he's really good at now probably going over to the sideline saying, hey, we need to do some things. Clock winding down. Herb Edwards now back in the backfield and also with the football, but dropped as soon as he got it there on the 22-21 yard line. And for Grambling, the tackle made by Christmas. 
that's part of why folks are thinking he's likely to be the defensive player of the year in this conference. Not only does he get into the backfield, he's a sideline to sideline player. Closing speed right there. Golly, he was right there. Brings up first down and 10 from the 21. Edwards around the right side going nowhere <laughs> and just as he got back to the line of scrimmage was pushed out of bounds by Rockwell guys I think if he had kept that Austin Howard may have had a little bit more look at everybody going down you see everyone there now you have somebody on the end but you can think if he holds it just a little longer and then pulls it out he may have a chance it'll be part of the chess match for Austin Howard today because he's a guy who loves to carve the defense up from within the pocket his mentality is one of a pocket passer he just happens to be extremely athletic when he keeps it. Second down 11. Bunch set to his left. Three wide receivers. And he's looking that way. Coming underneath. And down to the 15-yard line goes Kendall Catalan. His second catch of the day. And he's tackled by Dedrick Shine. You oh, see how that, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, how that takes some of the starts yes. out of the defense. Yes. Where because he's used that mobility, now the pass rush isn't getting home. They're not rushing with quite as much ferocity. We've seen a drag route run since the beginning of time, but it always seems to be open, especially when you run from the boundary sometimes. And that defense has been moved around with the shifts and trades. Now you're able to find the guy right over the middle of the field, pick up some positive yards, third and short, as opposed to third and long. Now third down and five, you can run it. Got his top running back, Edwards, to his right. Can also keep it himself. It comes underneath. And that's going to be right at the sticks. Catalan once again. And it's going to depend on the mark. Those are those smaller in stature receivers getting them matched up on safeties. Now you're going to see Catalan number 10 get almost caught in the wash, but still able to get just enough separation for Austin Howard. And Catalan got just enough for a first down. And the Southern offense waited till the back half of the first quarter to get rolling. But rolling they are here in the 44th annual Bayou Classic. They turned it over on the first play. And that led to a Devontae Kincaid touchdown right there. We head to the second quarter with Grambling on top by seven. It is nice to be inside the Superdome, but beautiful afternoon here in New Orleans outside. Grambling on top early seven to nothing as we are set to start the second quarter, which is presented by Army. One of the communities that always gets behind the military service, men and women. And they show up in droves for the Bayou Classic. You, you were here in New Orleans for a number of years. Yeah, they love football. I mean, they want to see you play, and, and they're, they're excited to come to the Bayou Classic. Good time to be a football fan in New Orleans with the Saints on an eight-game winning streak. They'll be back here next week. This drive, 69 yards, led by Austin Howard. Keeps it himself down to the seven-yard line. Remember, the first two possessions led to one interception and zero yards. Austin Howard has cleaned it up on this drive. He's four out of four for 26 yards. But Dawson Odom saw Devontae Kincaid dive into the end zone, into this end zone early in the first. See what he dials up here on second and seven. down to the seven again back just across the line of scrimmage and that will bring up third down Paul, Paul you bring up a great point as well inside the red zone the smaller receivers may hurt you they also use a tight end in this area Dylan Beard he was looking for him initially had to come off of him because he wasn't open he becomes your big tall receiver that you use in this area and he's used to attention in this part of the field here Charles 13 career touchdowns including four in the last three games. He wears number 42. Tigers bring five, and they get to him. Howard got back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. Deontay Hatter making the tackle. We've seen less movement pre-snap from Grambling State, now down in the red zone. What that ends up doing is even though it declares the alignment of the defense, but now in the red zone, like you're talking about, Charles, the space far more condensed. And so from a coverage standpoint, as long as you hit a landmark, it should lead to a tight window for the throw. And we'll 
receivers know where to go, but the defenders also know where you are going because you don't have much room. 25 yards out, Cesar Barajas. And he hooks it to the left. Score remains 7-0. He was watching me at the driving range the other day. Yeah. <laughs> That's about how a lefty would go. A lot of good on that drive for the Jaguar offense. But the scoreboard won't show it. Pulls it to the left. And Southern remains down by 7 in the 44th Bayou Classic. The Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by the U.S. Army team, the team that makes a difference. By the Louisiana Seafood Promotion and Marketing Board. And by the one place that will always be your place, Mickey D's. Battle of the Bands coming up at halftime here between Grambling and Southern. The Grambling side getting all warmed up. And the Grambling team led by a Devontae Kincaid touchdown leading 7 to nothing. Nice drive by Southern ending in no points. The 26-yard missed field goal. Southern defense there right away to throw Carter for a loss of one. Really good job of just rallying to the football. Contavious Preston, one of the guys there, but they got penetration, and then he comes in real nice right around his D lineman. Linebackers love to have that guy up front to take over, take up everything, and then they can come and clean it up. Grambling offense didn't take long to find itself this season. 14 points, game one, then 23, then seven consecutive with 30 or more. But now it's going to be third down and long. Nice play there by Simeon Houston. Houston listed as a defensive end, but they'll bring him from a two-point stance on occasion as well. They just kind of got set a little bit late. Wasn't near Devontae Kincaid, but gets up into the throwing window for the pass deflection. Kincaid flushed out, sets himself, fires downfield. Wow! What a throw to Daryl Clark. Just a bullet for the first down. And the presence of mind just to move away from the pressure to the right side of your screen, set up and fire a dart down the field. Nice throw. Wow. Gain of 30 yards. Good job with the recognition that Clark was open. And then, as you pointed out, Charles, just a rifle there to get it to him in a hurry. Nice hole for Carter. Another first down. Down to the 30-yard line. So a gain of 30 through the air. And then Carter for 21 yards on the ground. And watch the angle blocking of the offensive line. You see them moving the defenders laterally. Martez Carter able to cut it back against the grain. He knows precisely where the hole should declare itself. Footwork sets it up. And quickly back to the line of scrimmage and Carter cutting back down to the 21-yard line, gain of nine. Again, Anthony, you just called it, that line. Now, Martez Carter, watch him get to the side. He's going to stick that foot in the ground. The offensive line blocking, wrapping around. Watch that, boom! And then when you get up inside, your, your big offensive lineman trying to move away from him, he is hitting the hole with authority. Second down, less than a yard. Carter dropped in the backfield. He loses one to bring up another third down. He lost two then. Now that time, the pull of his left guard, David Moore, he starts to fold. Moore's here into the hole. I think in that situation, maybe Martez Carter, if he's pressing the hole a bit more, every once in a while, just be willing to take a four-yard gain as opposed to looking to pop that big run. And Kincaid picks up 30 yards to Clark on third down and long moments ago. This is third down and three. Keeps it himself across the 20-yard line. Good enough for a Tiger first down. That's an example of exactly what I'm talking about because Devontae Kincaid, as he keeps it, he could have tried to bounce it outside, do something really fancy, but he knew if I pick up three yards, I'm going to move the chains. Yeah, all you need every time is a good positive yards. You're not going to always hit a home run, but when it's there, these two guys in the backfield have that home run capability. Tigers two for two, converting third downs now on this drive. And that's a completion down to the 10-yard line. Quentin Geis with it. Gain of 10. 
offensive line guys has really done a nice job on this drive of protecting and allowing them to go tempo but there was nobody even close to Kincaid and he can sit back and fire that ball they've had a long line of Bramley quarterbacks that can throw he's right there with them. Martez Carter and pass pro as well when they slide the protection he's been doing a good job one-on-one -on -one. first and goal reverses to his left across his body Carter touchdown Anthony, I think he jinxed him just a little bit. Right, right in the middle. Right there. He has the block picked up with Lunkins, but he can't do it. But it doesn't matter. Okay, so when you don't, when you make a mistake, young people at home, this is how you don't compound it. You go get outside, you go catch the ball, and you score a touchdown. Second and third reaction plays <laughs> over and over again is how Devontae Kincaid gives defenses fits. They're going to probably take a look at this as well. The ruling on the field of a touchdown is under further review. Now, Anthony, you've been in a lot of defensive uh, coordinators' rooms, I'm, I'm sure. What do they say for a guy like <laughs> Kincaid? What do you have to do on the blackboard? You do what you can to try to pin him in from the outside in, and they're trying to see whether or not possession of the football is maintained as Martez Carter is reaching it across the inside of this front pylon here. So does that right foot stay in bounds as he lunges, and does he maintain possession of the football? Because if they rule... Not only the foot being in bounds, but if they rule as he's reaching across that he loses possession as it hits the front pylon, then they can actually rule that a touchback. Indisputable video evidence is what they always say. Ruling on the field, the touchdown is confirmed. Devontae Carter has now accounted for two touchdowns, one on the ground and that passing one right there. I thought he did an outstanding job of maintaining staying in bounds, but also Kincaid just was so effective and elusive, which we saw on film. That's one of those plus-minus plays for Martez Carter. You missed the block <laughs> yeah. initially. Then you said, you know what? I know my quarterback's going to keep working for me. Yeah. Devontae Kincaid's awareness, his elusiveness on display on that drive. Remember, on third and long, he rolled out to his right, set his feet. Uh -huh. Picked up 30 yards to Daryl Clark. And then on the touchdown, rolled to his left to find Martez Carter. A little celebration for the Tigers, up 14. Every rendition of the Bayou Classic is a tribute to the vision and the class of Eddie Robinson. He started the Grambling football program back in 1941, was a head coach for 57 years. 408 wins when he retired most all-time in college football his legacy one of kindness and humility all those 408 wins and everything that happens here in the Bayou Classic weekend he dreamed up this event loved it every single time and a lot happens this weekend but everyone involved pays tribute to all Eddie Robinson meant not only to Grambling but to the entire Bayou Classic weekend Coach Rob did so many things as an innovator with uniforms, with tempo, offensively. Things that are still modeled by other schools today. And Jamar Washington across the 20. A little speed there out to the 32-yard line. For more on the Eddie Robinson story here in New Orleans, here's Lewis Johnson. Yeah, Paul, here with a gentleman who carries his namesake, Eddie Robinson III, his grandson. And so you were standing here with me looking at those photos. What comes to mind is you see that and then, of course, stand here and watch this game that he created so many years ago. I tell you, uh, the Body Classic has become a, a real tradition uh, for a lot of folks here. Um, it started in 1974, right. and this is the 44th annual. So it's a Thanksgiving weekend tradition. Um, I grew up knowing that, hey, the Body Classic comes after Thanksgiving. And, um, <laughs> you know, the Robinson family, I mean, we just want to continue um, supporting the Bayou Classic. And, um, you know, the family, we're all here and we're enjoying it. You told me that you recently moved back to uh, Grambling, Louisiana there. You were taking care of your grandmother who has now passed on. But what else, what was the other reasoning behind being back close to this program again? I mean, obviously, when you come back to Grambling, you got to be a part of Grambling football, Louis. So, uh, you know, when Roger Fobbs took to uh, the helm and, Night, 19, um, I mean, in 2013, right. um, I couldn't do nothing but get behind him and support him. And, I mean, he's brought this program back. 
um, to higher heights. And um, I think um, he's a visionary as a coach. And I think um, he's going to just continue to build this program. And I tell everybody, and I'll use this loosely, he's a clone of Eddie Robinson. He is a clone of Eddie Robinson. Yes. And why is that? I mean, his father played for um, my grandfather as well. And he got it from his father. But also, he got it from playing for Coach Eddie Robinson. So, I mean, when you look at Broderick and what he has done with this program, I mean, to me, he's the you know, of my grandfather. Awesome. We want you to know his name will never be forgotten. Thanks so much, huh? All right. Thank you, Lewis. All right. Paul? Guys, thank you very much. Big time completion there from Austin Howard to Jamar Washington on third down. Looks to be just enough for the Jaguar first down. Paul, he talked about being an innovator and everything else. I agree. My, I got a letter from when I was getting recruited out of Houston, Texas, from Grambling. I kept that thing forever because it was Eddie Robinson on it. That's the one. You know, you, you, you grow up as a kid in Houston watching SWAC football and uh, getting an opportunity to get a letter from Eddie Robinson was a big deal. Said it once, I'll say it again because it's so incredible. He was the head coach for 57 years. All kinds of success that he talked about Broderick Fobbs. He was a running back here for him from 92 to 96. That's a gain of three. The Southern team on offense has to get something generated. They almost got points. Uh, the last time they were in the red zone, they have to come away with some points as the second quarter moves along. That last drive, 16 plays, 72 yards. Took almost eight minutes off the clock with the missed field goal. You see the zero there. They still trail 14 to nothing. Howard to his right and a big hit. Good job hanging on by Jamar Washington. His second catch on this drive. That's Jeterius Pouncey. He had the interception on the first play. That's when you go back to the huddle and you say, okay, get it to me a little quicker so I can <laughs> avoid it. But almost able to stay up. That was a huge hit by Pouncey. But Jamar Washington was able to take that hit and absorb it and almost still get some yards. And on a 5-7 receiver, you got to credit Pouncey for actually hitting in the proper target area as well. We've seen targeting become so prevalent around college football. That was a great textbook target spot on the tackle. Didn't wrap up, but he didn't pick up a penalty either. Brings up third down and six. Here comes the blitz. Howard stands in and delivers. There's the tight end you mentioned a little bit ago, Charles. Dylan Beard inside a grambling territory. First down. You know, the big receiver and a smaller lineman able to come across the field on a drag. And you see he's able to leave his defender. They're, they're playing inside that man coverage. He's able to cross the field, catch the ball, and pick up some positive yards. Previous snap zone coverage there, man coverage. Southern makes him pay. And the backup tailback with a nice cut to pick up nine yards. That's Devon Ben. Been a good supplement to the starter, Herb Edwards talked about having that cut ability he's able to find a hole get it quickly they have to continue to keep the run game going now help Austin out continuing to move at an awfully quick pace he eludes the tackler in the backfield out across the 20 yard line Devon Ben not looking like a backup performing like a starter to pick up that first down <laughs> and he was the starter as the season opened up suffered a knee injury that surgery had to leave the lineup for a little while that opened the door for Herb Edwards to take over as the running back and some of the yardage he's put up. But this is why, after moving from wide receiver, Devon Ben can still make plays like this. Another first down. Now it's first and 10 from the 15-yard line. A movement there by the Tiger D. And the penalty marker comes in. Turned out to be a free play. Offside, defense, number 90. Five-yard penalty. First down. You almost want a BOGO, buy one, get one free. If you're going to have a free yeah. play, go, go to the house, take it to the end zone. Good hard count there by Howard. It's part of why you tend to coach defensive linemen that if you jump, you know, you pick up the flag, you may as well penetrate. You may as well keep <laughs> going just to make sure they blow the play dead so you don't give up a free opportunity. Just inside the 10 yard line. Tackle made by Malcolm Williams. And to your point earlier, while Alston Howard was out, that those are some of the plays now you're starting to see the rush break off in the in the run game. That was another one where he's still filling himself out to see, okay, do I need to hold it or, or let it go? 
That time Ben was hit as soon as he hit the line of scrimmage. He had success two times in the first quarter. Big gains on the ground when he kept it himself. Went around the end. Empty backfield now. Penalty flag thrown. And the completion down to the six-yard line. Check in on the flag. That was Dennis Craig with the reception for the Jaguars. It's been a lot of high yellow in the air with all these flags in the first half. Offside, defense number 42. Five yard penalty is on the first down. Second offsides called against Grambling on this drive. And we see the variation in tempo coming back into the fold for Southern's offense. That's been part of why the prowling, that pre snap movement, the stem of Grambling's defense still been effective at times but not as consistently as it was earlier in the first quarter see that stare from Broderick Robbs to Mark Hale Jackson after <laughs> giving Southern that three five yards first and goal pitch to Ben brought down at the three gain of two defensive penetration again Ben looked like initially he was going to have somewhere to run. And talk about alley guys. Usually the safety has to be a mean guy. He has to run that alley and come and bring something. What a difference a touchdown would mean for Southern. Cutting that lead in half inside of five minutes now until halftime. Be nice to see a tight end throwback in this area. How about play action? Inside the one yard line. That's a gain of two. Great job, Dennis Craig, hanging on to them. And this has some similar principle, too, Sir Charles, where you're allowing the defense to flow in one direction off of play action and then utilizing your tight end to work against that, but reaction was on time for Graham. And Pouncey did a nice job of coming up hitting a much bigger guy. You've got to catch that ball and turn quickly. You're always taught as a tight end. Turn that shoulder. You're gonna know. You know you're gonna get hit, but you gotta get low and use your body to just run them over. Third and goal. We'll see if Howard keeps it himself. His tailback is Devon Ben. This is Ben, and that's a touchdown. A huge answer for the Jaguars. A lot of it leaned on the offensive line. They went with their big personnel down here, not just in the red zone, all the way inside the 10, put extra bodies, tight ends on the field, get physical with that Grambling defensive front. And they put Aaron Tiller up there so he could be the fullback, and he went in and just, you could tell he was looking to hit somebody. <laughs> ben with his fourth touchdown this season. Cesar Barajas, after he missed a field goal from 25 yards out earlier, up and in for the extra point. 12 plays, 67 yards, and this impressive drive for Southern does end in the end zone thanks to Devon Ben. But Devontae Kincaid has a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown for Grambling. Ben responds. The Southern offense waking up. We've got a game here at the 44th Bayou Classic. Southern band warming up for the Battle of the Bands coming up at halftime. The Southern offense just went 12 plays at 67 yards. Defensive lineman's dream right here because you see the guard and tackle. They're going to block down. And then the all-conference defensive lineman, Aaron Tiller, in at fullback. We're going to see Devon Ben. He's going to end up bouncing it outside off the block. So there with all the force at the point of attack behind Skylar Prohl, Jodice Harris. They get enough movement at the point of attack. That allows the running lane for Ben to turn the corner. Ben right now, nine carries, 29 yards, and that one touchdown. The biggest thing, Percy Cargo gets caught up in all that bigness. I mean, it's like four guys he's trying to see around yeah. him. Ben comes and is able to just run right through him. The running game a little bit more effectively with Herb Edwards out. They don't want to kick it to Martez Carter. Took one to the house last year in this game. Rambling offense will begin on its own 27-yard line. That was return of seven. 
The highlight of halftime is coming up. You can watch it right here. The Battle of the Bands will also have highlights and scores from around the nation. First half analysis between Grambling and Southern, but the Battle of the Bands, it's listed first for a reason. They're coming down <laughs> to the field. That is the highlight. Grambling Band is just, they're going through the pregame thoughts. They're, they're, they're getting, getting ready. ready. The game face on. <laughs> All coming up here. 335 left until halftime. And Carter scooting his way across the 40-yard line. First down, Grambling, again at 12. They're really attacking that guard center area now. You see the blocking there by the big center. He comes off combo almost to a sense, and they're able to just really get behind that and let Carter pick where he wants to go. Carter now, nine carries, 50 yards. That carry good for one. Let's check into the sideline with Lewis Johnson. So, all right, you mentioned the Battle of the Bands coming up. I've got the man who will lead the Grambling State Tigers up, uh, Jaqueline Keel. So, Jaqueline, you're a senior. This is the last time you'll have the chance. Give us a sense of what the last 10 days have been like to get ready for this. The last 10 days, um, they've been crazy. But the band, <laughs> we're excited. I mean, the energy, the energy is here. And we're definitely ready to put it down on the field and um, get these bragging rights. Show off, put Grambling on the map, continue the legacy. So as we watch the football teams go at it, I mean, when you talk about bragging rights, you're talking about the same level as the football team. Can you explain that? Yes, sir. Um, the football team and the band, we both, we both, are, uh, both two different unions, but we just like family. And both of us out here, we both here to do the same thing. The battle of the bands was crazy. Football game is crazy. The last thing we got to do is put the stamp on a halftime, and that's it. All right, there you go. Yes. Good luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank hey, you. I think they're ready, huh? You got to save some of that energy. Yeah, man. Sure. He's ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's pass the warmed-up phase. Third down and nine. And that's a strike from Kincaid to his top receiver, Daryl Clark, inside of Southern Territory. Gain of 17. Kincaid did a nice job of letting this play develop, too. He saw the linebacker moving over, and then he's just able to throw it right behind him. And they haven't blocked Aaron Tiller yet. <laughs> Regardless of where they put him left in, right in, over the nose, he hasn't been blocked, but because Kincaid, he can stand and deliver under pressure, still able to move the chains. You hear analysts talk about a quarterback cutting it loose, but when he decides to throw it, that, that is a fastball. First down and 10 from the 42. The play action comes underneath with the touch. Clark again tripped up by his own teammate just before he got to the 35. Oh, you bring up an excellent point. He's an Elite 11 guy, finalist. I mean, this kid can throw the football. And I think that's the one thing you see with his escape ability. And now what's starting to happen in the league, he may be a little bit shorter in stature, but he has a live arm. Clark now has five receptions. Inside of two minutes now until halftime. Here comes the blitz. Kincaid keeps it. And that's a first down, grambling down to the 19-yard line. Gain of 17, Devon Lindsay with that reception. Well, Kincaid saw Calvin Lunkins come. Even though the pressure actually didn't leak into the backfield, he still worked opposite the pressure, then found the throwing window. Another very accurate pass on the move. Kincaid actually ended his final season at Ole Miss right here at the Sugar Bowl to start out 2016 before he transferred to Grambling. Comes underneath. This is Clark again. Resets down to the 10-yard line. Game of eight. Well, I played with Marshall Falk, and he could really do that. I'm not comparing Carter to what Marshall could do, but Marshall would stop on a dime, and then you would fly by him. He has done that multiple times today and really just given the defensive secondary fits. And in that Marshall Falk mold, he's shown that all-purpose ability throughout his career. Kick returner, receiver out of the backfield, runner, blocker. He's doing it all for Grambling. The Southern pass rush failing to make Kincaid feel uncomfortable so far. Carter just across the 10-yard line right at the first down marker. And you bring up a good point, Paul. They're not allowing Southern to substitute. So those linemen, other than Tiller, look like they are hands on the hip and a little bit tired. Tiller is still coming, but his gang is not with them when he's there. And every time they do get to him in the pocket, he's been able to successfully evade that pressure to the right and the left. Plenty of time here. Penalty marker comes in. Little juke move into the end zone. Wow. The quickness to get in, but we do have the penalty marker on the 15-yard line. We don't have phone booths anymore, so I like to say kitchen pantries. If you get him in the pa kitchen pantry, he is going to make you try to get all the food you can, and he's going <laughs> to not allow you to get it. Personal foul, hands to the face, 78 on the offense. 
15 yard penalty. Still be third down. Ouch. That's on Trent Scott. One of the best tackles in the SWAC. The offensive line. He's second team all SWAC from last season. He's in line to be SWAC again, but at the left tackle position, it's one of the ways he improved early. They called it on Scott, but I can't imagine that was actually who the flag should have been thrown on. Perhaps the official called a, called a different number than what was intended. Yeah, that was a huge play because the defender falls down and he's just taking him to the ground. Would have been 20 to 7. Now they're backed up to the 25 yard line. Southern has called their first timeout. With only 13 seconds left. Getting close to halftime. Tigers enjoying a seven point lead. Back live at the Bayou Classic, Battle of the Bands coming up in just a moment. We talked to one side, now we've got to hear from Southern. Trayvon Sr. is a sophomore. First time you'll lead the, the band out as a drum major. What's a moment like this like, just before you go out? It's a major moment. It's a moment that I've been looking forward to since I was a little kid. So I'm ready. You are ready? Oh, yes, sir. And so are we. Good luck out there. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. Ready to go. Man, I'm telling you. Those bands, man. When That's, the ready brass. To go. Yeah. That's the brass. Yeah. I was a trombone player when I was coming up. So I know all about that brass section. I wanted to be in the drum line. But I didn't play anything. Ah. I did not play. But I sure think I can in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to watching Battle of the Bands coming up here along with everyone else at home. 13 seconds left now. Third down and 16. Kincaid. Evading pressure again, fires to his left. Boy, excellent chance for an interception for that Southern defense. Demario Houston could have, oh, should have had that one. You want that one back. Demario Houston had an opportunity to kill this half, catch that ball and put it away and not give Grambling any opportunities. His dad, Steve, played with Coach Odom in high school. They both went to Shelby Crest. Marius Houston went to Shelby High School. Mark Orozco now from 42 yards out. He's four out of six in between 40 and 49 yards this year. And that one is true. He's now five out of seven from that range. The clocks go to zeros here. And Grambling will take a 10-point lead into the halftime locker room. A missed opportunity to take points off the board by Southern. I think back to the touchdown from a couple of snaps ago that was taken off by penalty. Devontae Kincaid, 130 yards passing. And also a rushing touchdown. Roderick Fobbs is with our Lewis Johnson. Well, Coach, this game be, uh, started with a defensive interception. Your thoughts on the way the defense played early on to set the tone? Well, I thought we started out rather fast. I thought we did a really good job of, of stopping the run and getting on and off the field. Uh, we kind of ran into a lull right there and created some mistakes and gave them opportunities, and they took advantage of it and got down and scored on us. All right, so what are the most important keys if you're going to get yourself to the SWAC title game? Well, we got to start out fast the second half. I mean, this is a hell of a football team, and, and they play well for four quarters. So this first possession is huge for us, and then we got to finish the game the way we always know how thanks so much all right Paul the Southern fires an interception on the first play of the game they respond pretty well the Grambling leads 17 to 7 at halftime the Bayou Classic halftime will be presented by P&G Crest Bayou Classic halftime show presented by P&G's Crest 3d white toothpaste the smile so bright you will never be overlooked two quarters in the books for the 44th Bayou Classic and the Tigers lead the Jaguars by 10. University Marching Band is led by drum major Trayvon the Don Caesar from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Show him some love. Thank you. 
Robots will now take you through a series of high step and precision drills under the sound of In the Stone. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the Southern University Marching Band would like to bring you with to Proctor and Gamble for its sponsorship for today's halftime show. Put your hands together for Proctor and Gamble. together for the fabulous dancing dolls and they dazzle you with style and grace the tune is called shells yeah And now moving at 360 steps per minute. One of the many reasons why when you say Southern University Marching Band, it means shelter. 
time. It is the S on their chest that lets you know that they're the best. The Southern University Marching Band is simply America's finest. So sit back, relax, for you're about to experience the most exciting time of your life. As the stimulating, the dazzling, the house rocker, the rock of all houses as the crowd pleaser takes you on a ride. The human jukebox will now get down to... It's time to turn up. That you don't, that's no more. All we do is jig. All we do is jig. All we do is clap, clap. They call them the human jukebox. The Southern University Band, Grambling State is next. And we'll be back and hear from them after the break. Don't go away. Like we always do about this time, New Orleans, Louisiana. Today is the day. So let's have a bold to Take a look at GSU's terrific tandem, better known as that duo. Cornelius came to get Punk Ewing and Jaquilin keep your cool.
That is the world-famed Tiger Marching Band after the break. Scores and highlights from a busy and eventful day in college football. We'll be right back. IU Classic Halftime Show presented by PNG's Crest 3D White Toothpaste. A smile so bright you will never be overlooked. Third quarter about to get underway here at the Superdome right now, grambling on top. 17-7, to the winner goes to next week's conference title game. Paul Burmeister, Charles Arbuckle, and Anthony Heron. You just saw the scoreboard, Anthony. What do the Jaguars have to do to erase that 10-point deficit? Well, the word finish really comes to mind for me. You think of a couple of opportunities. Missed field goal by Barajas. Uh, missed their interception right there at the end of the first half. So points that could be on the board for them and taken off the board for the opponent. Yeah, I also think, too, special teams has to play a role for Southern. And whenever you get behind in games like this and you're trying to make it go, you have to make sure you're able to get things going. Dawson Odoms, his Jaguars have a six-game win streak heading into this game. On the other side, Broderick Fobbs a little bit better off. The Tigers have won nine straight. And as I just mentioned, it's not just the bragging rights on the line here for the 44th Bayou Classic. It's a spot against Alcorn State in Houston next week for the SWAC Conference title game. Grambling won the toss before the game. They deferred, so they get it right back. And we'll see if they can start the game as well as their defense did as they picked off the very first Austin Howard pass, the first offensive play of the game, and turned it into points. And Mart says Carter, the top running back for the Tigers, gets out just across the 30-yard line. Devontae Kincaid. Pretty good first half, guys. 11 out of 17, and also some nice moves on the ground. Able to throw the football effectively, and his receivers making plays after Daryl Clark there, and then Kincaid scoring, laying on Tiller, and then this play was nice. He was able to evade the rush, find his receiver, Martez Carter, for six. Yeah, a lot of those highlights, Anthony, come courtesy of the elusiveness of Kincaid moving to his right and his left to throw and also to run. Second and third reaction, and quite often some quarterbacks who don't stay within themselves can end up leading to turnovers and mistakes when they go beyond the script. Martez Carter, leading running back with 65 yards rushing and not going to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. In fact, he loses two yards, tackled by Bryant. And the point we were just making that that's what I believe makes Devontae Kincaid so special because he extends the play, he goes off script, but he still, while doing that, protects the football. You know, a lot of times if it doesn't end up being a complete pass, it's at worst an incomplete. He doesn't throw many interceptions or fumble. In fact, uh, two years as a starter, Anthony, 49 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. And this year, since week one, 19 TDs to only two picks. And wisely just fires that one away. You know, I saw Russell Wilson a lot in college in his career. And Kincaid has some of that ability. And that's the one thing Russell Wilson would do. He would get rid of the football. Uh, he didn't lose the ball a lot. There's only four fumbles lost for Grambling, which is set seventh in the nation. And a guy that's doing RPOs and different things, you would expect a little bit more frequency of fumbles. And the team excelling in that area right now, plus 20 for the season with the one interception and no turnovers for the offense. I mean, led the entire country in that category for the vast <laughs> majority of the season. Astounding numbers. Third down and 12. Only three Jaguars rushed, leaving plenty of time. But that falls incomplete. He was looking for Lindsey. Had a chance to catch it, but the Southern defense comes through. And I thought he had Kobe Ross, who was open early on a dig route. He tries to go to a better defended guy by Demario Houston. Had Kobe Ross across the middle. Demario Houston does a nice job of pass breakup there. And Houston getting his hand in there late to knock that one out. And Danny Johnson, the star cornerback for Southern, back deep to receive. And Johnson up to the 39-yard line. And back to the first half we saw from Southern, especially on the offensive side of the football. Austin Howard started off on a very low note. He threw that interception to Jeterius Pounce. And from there, he really seemed to settle in in the half. Ended up 11 out of 17. Had a big completion. He had to Dylan Beard to move the chains. Utilized his legs, though, especially just in moving the chains enough. That set up 
this opportunity for Devon Ben to get the first and only touchdown so far on the board for the Jaguars. You see number 21, the top tailback for the Jaguars. Herbert Edwards to the right. We didn't see him a lot there at the end of the first half. In fact, he only only had four carries for five yards while Devon Ben carried it nine times. Get him here on the swing pass. A little patience out of the backfield to the 47-yard line. And a positive start for the Jaguar offense, picking up seven. Paul, you bring up a good point. That's the one thing they said about Herb Edwards, patience and vision. He gets his hand on his big offensive lineman there, Jeremiah <laughs> Abbey, and says, okay, big man, let me follow you. Let me follow you to the promised land. 16th catch of the year. Bursts up the middle for a first down. Excellent job by the Jaguar offensive line as Edwards goes out to the 40 and picks up 13. Abby pulled out in space a moment ago there. The zone blocking just showed the left feet of the offensive line all moving in unison. Edwards cutting back against the green. Edwards two plays, 20 total yards here to start out the third quarter. Now he keeps it himself, stands in and fires. The old back shoulder fade can't be thrown any better than that. Cameron McKay hauls it in. First down Jaguars, gain of 27. Dawson Odoms is not shy about saying this is the best passing quarterback in the SWAC, bar none. Great example of why right there. Knew the entire way based off the leverage of the defender. Wanted to go back shoulder. Receiver, outstanding job reaching back to snatch it from the sky. So Austin Howard had his first pass intercepted today. He's come back. He's now 11 of his last 13. And now over 100 yards. First down and 10 from the 13. Little roll out to his right. Two penalty markers come in. <laughs> Throwing to an offensive lineman. Uh, Jeremiah Abbey. <laughs> yeah, this play didn't start off very well at all. And finished even worse. Formation. Five men in the backfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty still be first down. I feel like I was Captain Obvious with that statement, but it was so true. Jeremiah Abbey declared himself as eligible. He's on the end line there. And then he goes out and sneaks out, and you can see there was just mass discombobulation on this play. And big man, you got to get on the ball just to make sure, just to make sure it's down. And the initial alignment of the yeah. tackle has to break the hip bone of that guard on the interior. So Abby anticipating the screen was lined up too far back. Mass discombobulation leads to the first penalty for Southern and the Tiger defense in the backfield. There to greet Edwards at the 20-yard line. Staying home, Darius Christmas, the leading tackler for the Tigers. And Anthony, you bring up a good point. He's always there, but he was even more so. And now he was able to cut, cut the defender on the edge that time and that's why they were able to pick up some yards but christmas is always around the football he's on the buck you can and watch list for defensive player of the year at the fcs level for a reason leads the team coming in 72 tackles next best was jacharius pouncey all the way down at 44. and howard fires incomplete and uh, now it'll bring up third down and 17. Negative plays, you have to find a way to get some positive yards. And after that first down, they weren't able to generate anything more. Now is a real key point to not turn the ball over, be aggressive, try to get yourself in a position where you can score a touchdown or kick a field goal. And keep in mind, this may be four down territory because we haven't seen Barajas kicking the ball cleanly from pregame all the way through the game here with the missed field goal in the first half. Now that missed field goal came from inside of 30 yards as well. See if they can uh, get back a little here on third down and 17. Look into the end zone, and that's going to fall incomplete. We're looking for the double move to Jamar Washington. It wasn't even close. Holiday celebration in the backfield again. There's Christmas. <laughs> I see him working off Devon Ben. Ben has done a pretty sound job in protection throughout the day, but that double clutch on the double move allowed the extra beat for Christmas to get home. Is he looking for ornaments back there, or is he just looking for a sack? Not the glass kind. You, know, you don't want to look for the glass <laughs> ornaments. You break people in half. Oh, I'm sure he, he, he can tell you all of them. <laughs> 37 yards away, Barajas. See if he can go one for two today, and that's blocked. 
Someone up here earlier said special teams going to have to step up and make a play. And that time it was Grambling. Well, we talked about it at the break and coming back. You have to make plays. And that looks like Jatarius Bouncy, oh, yes. who has been all over the field. He just missed. That edge guy misses him completely. He whiffs, and that's why he's able to get that block. Pouncey with an interception to start the game in the first quarter and a key blocked field goal right there. His Tigers lead by 10. The Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by Crest. Healthy, beautiful smiles for life. By the Louisiana Seafood Promotion and Marketing Board. And by the U.S. Army team, the team that makes a difference. Well, let's go back to that last missed field goal there. We'll see Jatari's Pouncey right there coming off the edge. Jerron Johnson's the tight end. He's got to get a double bump. Left hand on the inside, right hand on the outside. Gets absolutely nothing on Pouncey coming off the edge. That creates a short corner for the field goal block. See if the Grambling offense can get it going now inside of 12 minutes. Left in the third quarter. And Kincaid with the give and the extra fight for Martez Carter. Contavious Preston with the, a whiff. I mean, he completely misses Carter. Watch 55 White coming in. Clean shot. Boom. I'm gone. And that's what you have to do. You have to size a guy up. That's the toughest thing on a guy that has that ability. That initial make you miss right at the line of scrimmage leading to that whiff allowed him to gain nine yards. Three wide receivers to the right of Kincaid, and that's where Carter moves as well. Carter now 14 carries for 54 yards, the leading rusher in this game. Kincaid keeps it himself, easily a first down, and just across the midfield strike to the 49, picks up 11 yards. Just the proper read. So many defenders, especially on the inside, end up going with Martez Carter. And that cutback lane is available to Devontae Kincaid because DeAndre Sims got up to the second level and got just enough of a piece of the linebacker to give him the alley. And Anthony Preston is saying, okay, well, somebody stop juking me right now. And that's a tough place for a linebacker at his size. He's made a lot of plays. He's also playing with the torn labor. Come out on the field. We're going to have to get a new set of chains. On his left shoulder, which he'll have repaired at the end of the season. Getting a new set of chains, Paul. You know what a new set of chains means? Sound of the chain game. Time for a little break. Third quarter, 44th Bayou Classic. Tigers lead by 10. Pull-up's not an Olympic competition yet, but a reminder, in 2018, the world's best athletes compete on the world's biggest stage. The Winter Olympics coming February to the networks of Universal. Yet. Not an Olympic event yet. Not yet. I got the guy on the right. What do you think? He seems very proud of his physique. I agree with you. <laughs> I would, too. A tough competition. You wear a tank top to a pull-up competition. You better win. <laughs> I like that's, how that's you threw point, yet right? in there, though, for the <laughs> Olympics. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Guy in the left. Barely. <laughs> oh. Get past 10 pull-ups, you're doing something. Certainly in my world. First down and 10. Carter up the middle just after he crossed the midfield strike. Brought down. And no game. On the left, man in blue did win. It's oh. official. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just, Underdog. Just a standard T-shirt. Steps up. Gets it done. You saw the look on his face fighting there at the end. And just enough. Kincaid quickly. And it looked like Clark wasn't Kincaid quite ready for that one. Bring up third and long. What type of grit and determination you see at the Bayou Classic. Ah, he got that rip. last one. Anthony, how many could you do? Uh, in my heyday or no, 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 as no, we no, stand no, right no. here? As we stand here. Oh, I'd knock out at least 10 right now. There you go. That's good. It's very good. I mean, my, my heyday. Different story. <laughs> at, least you, at least you had a heyday. <laughs> third and 10. Grambling offense. Winner of this game moves on to the championship game of the conference next week in Houston against Alcorn State. Kincaid stepping up. Again, eluding pressure until he got just across the 50-yard line. It's as good a job as they've done bringing him down when he escapes. 
Montavious Gaines. We haven't called his name a whole lot, but Montavious Gaines comes late. He's the late guy. He's almost a spy. Then he gets there and tries to go after the football. We knew they would do this. He had receivers. Good coverage on the back end. I'll tell you the other thing about this Southern team. Defensive touchdowns, they have three on the year where Grambling have four. You may have to generate some points from your defense. What did Trey Oliver tell us before the game? If we're going to spy, we've got to make sure we have the right person in position to do so. It's a great example from the Rover in the Jaguars defense. Danny Johnson back deep to receive for Southern. Call, calling for the fair catch at the 15-yard line. Well done by the Southern defense. 34-yard punt. And we'll check out the Jaguar offense on the other side of the break. Familiar face right there to all the people who know Grambling football, Everson Walls. Fantastic NFL career starting out with the Cowboys after playing in a few bayous here in the late 70s and early 80s. And there he is with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, that was a while ago. Right now, he's with Lewis Johnson. Well, what a tremendous football career you've had, Everson. It was really something to hear all the accolades. And you think about being a four-time Pro Bowler and moving through the professional career. Now you're a semifinalist for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, how was that? How are the nerves? Well, you know, it's the furthest I've been. And uh, it, this is unknown territory for, for me right now. Uh, I'm just going to keep my head down. I kind of wish I didn't even know. Right. Because now that's all I'm thinking about. Sure. So, you know, I like to just go through life and just live it day by day and not worry about what's going on with all those accolades. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, a lot of people already think I'm in the Hall of Fame. So <laughs> but we'll keep it at that. But you like it to be official. Yes. Many don't know that you only played your senior year in high school and that Coach Eddie Robinson gave you his last scholarship. Can you reflect back to that time? Yeah, I, I can. As a matter of fact, I, I, I was... You have to know some people. Right. And I was able to get some film uh, up there uh, to uh, to Coach Robinson. Uh, I went through my girlfriend's uncle who went through the <laughs> offensive coordinator, who went through the, the defensive coordinator. Right. Next thing you know, Rob and I are sitting face to face with my mom trying to talk our way into that last scholarship. Right. And then getting that and him bringing Stop you along, that. which then turned into this great career, 57 interceptions. I mean, does it go back to Grambling, everything you've accomplished? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you can go back to Grambling and you can see the difference between myself uh, before I got to Grambling and after I left. Uh, to be around Coach Robinson uh, all of my college career, to listen to his stories, to listen to him articulate how important it is to be a young, not just young African-American, but to be a young American. Right. Those are the kind of things that he stressed upon us after and, 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 and during every practice. All right, so what's the date? When will you find out if you're going to make it in or not? I don't want to know, man. You don't want to no, know? No, you tell me. I think it's January the 2nd or okay. somewhere in there. Is okay. that right? That's too soon for me, man. All right, we wish you the best. All right, good luck. I appreciate you, Lewis. All right, appreciate you, Lewis. Everson Lewis, thank you very much. That's the sentiment of so many of the guys waiting to hear if they're going to yeah, get in. Yeah. Used to work with Terrell Davis and Kurt Warner, and same thing. Those guys didn't want to talk about it every step of the way. They are now in, and going down there is Austin Howard at the 12-yard line. It's the third sack on the day for Grambling, and this pressure is going to come, and you've got to protect your quarterback, but they're coming with a little bit of delayed pressure. Pouncey again just seems to always show up. That's three sacks on the day for Grambling when this offensive line had been only 10 sacks in the last six games. It's a big moment for Malcolm Williams, the guy who played a lot of special teams earlier in his career. Now he's getting more rotation in that front seven on defense for the Tigers. A big stop there for the Grambling defense because the Southern defense has been stopping the Tiger row, at least to start the second half here. And Martez Carter with a chance. Didn't get a chance to get his hands on that one, but the Tiger offense will start pretty good field position here with 8.08 left in the third quarter. This feels like, guys, this is a point where Southern's defense may have to be their best offense. Um, you know, they, they are really stagnant on offense. In the meantime, the, the Jaguar defense doing a pretty nice job. We talked about at the top of the broadcast that the Tigers came in as the number one scoring offense in the SWAC. A little over 32 points per game. They did score in that first drive. Started deep in the Jaguar territory, but... They've been stalled many times since. This will be a first down and a big gain down to the 30-yard line. Ball did come out. Looks like it came out after he touched the ground. Gain of 23 yards for Kobe Ross. 
We saw Danny Johnson a moment ago because they continue to avoid that boundary side, the short side of the field that Danny Johnson from Southern lines up at. Real quick pace to snap the ball again across the 25-yard line. And the Grambling offense, two plays on the move. Lindemi and Brooks, receiver slash running back with that run up the middle. Kincaid. Inaccurate, wanted Clark there to bring up third down and three. And if you're Southern's defense, this is where you substitute. Get some fresh people in on that defensive front. That speed, that tempo takes it out of your hands. And Clark with six catches in the first half. He's been quiet so far. Easily the best drive of the second half for the Tigers yet. Jaguars bring five on third and three. And finally, they bring down Kincaid. Calvin Lunkins. Loss of 11. Well, they were able to overload the protection from Grambling State. And Lunkins does just enough to maintain the edge of the defense. As Kincaid starts to escape, you see from scouting, he's a lateral escape guy. Loves to run towards the sideline to evade defenders. Lunkins right on the spot. Mark Orozco from 52 yards out has not attempted a field goal beyond 50 yards this season. Has the distance, but pulled it. Went wide at the end. Lumpkins, huge play for that Southern defense with that 11-yard sack. Led to that missed field goal. It's an interesting thing when you look at it from the standpoint of right here, Anthony. Here's Lunkins. Because they add the other defenders, protects in a slit, the running back leaks out of the backfield. There's not the extra blocker, the additional blocker available to try and help Kincaid get the edge. Lunkins has been there the whole game, finally. <laughs> he was finally able to corral Kincaid. And we'll see if that can kickstart the Jaguar offense. They've been watching their defense shut down the top offense in the conference. They start with the ground game out to the 37-yard line for a gain of two. Talk about the key being that defensive front. They've done a really nice job of bottling up Herb Edwards. The Southern offense started out uh, struggling in the worst way. First play was an interception followed by a punt, but then they started moving the ball, but Anthony, they just haven't been taking advantage of that movement. The special teams hasn't been their friend. That's where things have failed Southern, but they're only down 10 at this point, so you're still right there in the game. That's part of the message that Dawson Holmes is sending on the sideline. He's captain positive in this situation. Howard, 13 out of 19, now 14 out of 20, but that's well short of a first down. Stacy Pirro with the reception. Charles, this to me feels like a point in the game. If they pick up a first down, to go with some sort of misdirection, whether it's a double reverse, whether it's even a regular reverse, because the flow, the swarm yep. of the grambling speed on defense is getting to the football so frequently, you want to try to work against that offensively. And they were doing that earlier. They, they changed some things up, but this grambling offense seems like it can just tee off on the, I mean, defense can just tee off on Southern's offense right now. And remember, Howard kept it himself for a couple of big games in the first quarter, and we haven't seen him involved in the ground game since. Stands in the pocket, throws the perfect pass. It falls incomplete. Stacy Pirro won't have it any easier than that. Well, the only thing missing at this point is Lemony Snicket because it's just another self-inflicted wound on a well-thrown ball. Protection holds up. Austin Howard puts it right on the money, and Stacy Pirro off a great route combination. Look at everything yeah, separate. Yeah. Pirro off the patience, hits him right in both hands. It was a great call offensively because whenever you have bunch or you have those guys there the numbers get screwed up and when they start crossing before the receivers take off Piro running free and clear you have to catch that football some key drops here for Southern both sides of the ball remember late in the first half the drop potential interception in the end zone and the drop by Piro there to bring out the punt team this is Martez Carter from his own 15 Nifty run in there to get out to the 25-yard line after the 43-yard punt. Well, Southern's most experienced quarterback ever making his 44th career start. Can't do it any better than he did right there.
but it's scrambling football when we come back. An incredible episode of SVU with a moment you've got to witness. And Olivia's secret is finally revealed. Mariska Hargitay stars in a new SVU Wednesday on NBC. Charles said she's another proud UCLA alum. Yeah, uh, yeah, she is. Good, I'll, good I'll day for the Bruins. Yeah, yeah. They got Chip Kelly first and then Marissa, Marissa Hargitay. There you go. I, I want to make sure I got her <laughs> last name right. <laughs> Devontae Kincaid, the top-rated passer in the SWAT coming into this game. 12 out of 22, 153. One touchdown, no picks. Hey, Carter off the left side, finds a little room, gets a first down out to the 37-yard line. Gain of 13, brought down by Demario Houston. There was a one penalty earlier in the game, but overall, Trent Scott's played really well. It's been a great matchup whenever Aaron Tiller has been lined up at the right defensive end against Grambling's left tackle. And right back to Carter. Quick moves in the backfield and a leap across the 40-yard line. Fumbled the ball. Southern claims to have it. Yes, they do. Well, they're going to take a look at this, but when you go airborne like that, you give yourself a chance to get hit up in the air. The ball oh, is out. That ball but came out. And the didn't. interesting thing. Please reset the game clock. Watch it. Martez Carter, while he's in the air, being hit about eight feet off the ground by several defenders, then switches the ball from his right hand to his left as he's approaching the ground. And that's the turn of events that this Southern defense has been working for, the ability to take the ball away. And fumbles had been a big problem for Martez Carter over the last two seasons. 11 fumbles leading into this year. Last week, last game, was the very first fumble he'd had the entire season. So ball security had improved so much for Mr. Mr. Excitement before the end of the season. Ball knocked out by Kyle McGregor and recovered by Decavian Champion. And the Southern offense in business. First in town from the Grambling 40. Howard can keep it himself, does just that, and dives out to the 34-yard line. Picks it up seven yards. Remember, we talked to Coach Fobbs, and he was saying our offense sometimes is predicated on how well our defense plays. Well, Southern now has to show that. Good job by Austin Howard. We talked about it earlier. Sometimes use your legs when you need to. He was hurt earlier in the year. He's healthy now. That was a great decision by finding the opening and taking off. See if Southern can take advantage of the rare grambling turnover. Only seven coming in. Easily the lowest in the conference. Good patience there by Edwards as he burst across the 30-yard line down to the 26 to pick up a Jaguar first down. And remember we asked, I asked Herb Edwards on the call, I said, are you a good dancer? He said, yeah, I can cut a rug. And I say that because most good running backs, when they get in the rhythm, they're able to really find that cut and move, and he, he showed that right there. Of course, he says he's a good dancer. You should ask one of his teammates. They would have given you an honest answer. There he goes down to the 20-yard line. Malcolm Williams with the tackle. After a gain of six, so the ground game picking up steam here for the Jaguars. Same in yin and yang with the improvement of Herb Edwards. He's the same call. Bramlin is taking their first time out. Dawson this Odoms. This will be a 30-second timeout. Like what he sees here from his offense here recently. Sunday night is football night. Jordy Nelson and the Packers take on Antonio Brown and the Steelers on Sunday night football. Mike Tirico, Dan Patrick, your host for football night in America, 7 o'clock Eastern, only on NBC, your home of Super Bowl 52. It's amazing how Pittsburgh will look like the best team in the National Football League one game, and then the next game they'll start to look like a team who maybe won't make the playoffs. Were you looking at my head? Because I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. And then Green Bay, on the other hand, really trying to do all they can to keep it together. But Pittsburgh, they can look so good one week, and then the next week you don't know what you're going to get. Well, you got Bruins everywhere. Now starting a quarterback for the Packers. That's, that's true. That's true. He would have fit Chip Kelly's system well. Uh, very well. See what Josh Rosen thinks. <laughs> Second down four. Trio wideouts to the right of Austin Howard. And that's Herb Edwards to his left.
And Howard just flings that one away. For a moment, I wondered if he threw it away far enough out of bounds, but had enough on it to bring up third and four. Grambling did a much better job on that bunch combination, and it forced Howard into a bad decision. He really has nowhere to go. Pressure Local coming. Foul, intentional grounding. There was a receiver in the area. And there the official is saying intentional grounding was not the call, but he was able to get outside and outside the tackle box, which allowed him to throw that football away. He also had one of his wide receivers in the area there. So this third down, we'll see how the second level operates for Grambling. All the prowling they stopped doing for a while. Edwards motions out of the backfield. Howard wanted him, but now looks to the end zone. Touchdown, Southern. What a catch, Kendall Catalan. Anthony, we talked about Howard being able to decipher the coverage and everything else. That time he had a wide open bend to the side. He fakes out there and then he goes up top. This was a very nice throw by him and setting it up very, very well. Passing Dawson Odom's on the sideline. They're still in this game. For his team. <laughs> they are right there. A lot of patience shown by the offense. They've been coming so close. Watching the special teams fail. They've missed two field goals. We'll see a Barajas. They knock home the second extra points. That's up and in. And Howard DeCatalan has a three-point game. And look at Dawson Odoms. It's the first game for Catalan. See him here working from off the line of scrimmage. So that allows, this is Charles we're talking about, that allows the free release. And from there, the corner route requires the quarterback, Austin Howard, to put it right on the money. That's pinpoint throwing a wide receiver open. And Herb Edwards, excuse me, was on the out. He was a running back going out to the outside. I thought initially, hey, throw the football. But it was set up perfectly because they knew he could beat him one-on-one. -on -one. We talked about these one-on-one -on -one matchups with these smaller stature receivers and a great throw by Austin Howard. That's eye discipline because you show the defense with your eyes that you may throw it out into the flat. The corner, Jatarius Pouncey, sucked up. That now dictates the one-on-one -on -one matchup and set up the open corner. It's great recognition and awareness by Howard because he wanted yeah. to go to Edwards. And when you have 44 starts, you expect to know, okay, the corner comes up and a little round behind him out of the open, and that's what he saw. Guys, you bring up a great point. Troy Aikman, who I played with in college, would do that very well, even on the college level. He would look the defense off, and I knew I was going to be open. If I get to that spot, I had a chance to catch the football. Mark says Carter with a chance to bring this one back. And he gets out to the 35-yard line. All set up by the fact that they put the ball on the ground. The team that led and still leads the SWAC in turnover margin. Carter fumbles and Southern recovered. There's a takeaway on the opening snap of the game. But Grambling's defense had the interception. Now Southern working their way back into the game. Defense turning to offense for the Jaguars. Key point, too, guys, you have to score points off those turnovers, and that's what Southern was able to do in that particular drive. Only the eighth turnover committed by the Grambling offense, and now the Southern defense in the backfield throwing down Carter at the 30-yard line. Elijah Allen for a loss of five. Carter is still on the turf. Uh, this is a look at the opposing end of what Carter had done so well earlier in the game. All those points we were making about him getting vertical. Yes. You, you start laterally and then at a certain point you plant your foot to go north and south. Here the defense strung him out over and over again. Ends up bellying backwards and the pursuit from Southern takes over. His shoulder stayed to the sideline. That gives you three or four defenders when you're going to their lane and their zone to flow and fill on you and that's what happened there. Mark says Carter Easily the leading rusher for Grambling. 87 yards already today. We're back to the Superdome right after this. Ever wonder why we face off on Wednesday night? Wednesday. That's Grambling's leading rusher, Martez Carter. He's gone from laying down to sitting up. 3-11 left here in the 44th Bayou Classic. Tigers by three. Here's the play on which he was just hurt. He's maybe the most explosive element available 
to Grambling's offense. Think about all the talent that was lost from last season. And we were mentioning earlier his all-purpose ability. It's good to see him able to at least get up to some extent, be helped off the field here. And Elijah Allen was able to really just stay where he was and forcing the cornerback or the Sam linebacker even, and he was able to just stay with Montez and brought him down. Senior out of Monroe, Louisiana. So Charlie. coming into the offense in his place, Desherius Flowers wears number 28. This is second down and long. Second down, 15. Kincaid stepping up and firing. Excellent job by Danny Johnson. We mentioned he's already been invited to the Senior Bowl. There's an example why. Aeneas Williams would be super proud of this play. <laughs> this was an outstanding, and that's a former Southern alum who was so good at the cornerback position. Look at that. At the last second, you just reach out and knock that football down. Great play. One of the things defensive backs struggle with, when the ball's in flight at the moment of truth, do you panic? And Danny Johnson has always shown the will, that mental aptitude not to panic at the moment of truth as the ball approaches the receiver he's covering. Third down and 15. The Southern defense came out of the halftime locker room ready to play. They bring five. Kincaid goes deep. Little contact, a little bit of grabbing, but no flags. And it's fourth and 15. He threw it into an area where there were three defenders. Now, this is one of those situations where you look shorter because you going, you went for it all on the last play. That, la that play there, get the first down, put yourself in position to keep the drive going and get this momentum back. And there certainly was a bit of a tug at the jersey. He's definitely throwing it into double and at the end triple coverage. Like maybe Benjamin Harris got away with a little something. Kincaid will get the troops settled down there on the rambling sideline. Houston is deep to receive. From his own 23. Almost around the right side. Brought down to the 29 after the punt of 47. Let's go to the sideline and check in with Lewis. Well, Martez Carter is in some pain. Uh, he initially grabbed for his left rib cage on the field when they helped him off. You can see right now as they lift up his jersey, they're trying to put an ice bag under his pads. You see that face right there? That tells you about the pain he's experiencing again on the left side, left rib cage. Lewis, thank you. We saw the wincing there. That's the third leading rusher in the SWAC. That's also the leading rusher today with 82 yards. A lot swag. of pain. Last couple of years, 2015, 2016, an all SWAC performer. In line to be all SWAC again this year. It's Big loss for the Grambling offense. Southern offense, last time they had it, put it in the end zone. Edwards across the 30-yard line penalty marker came in and lies on the 28-yard line. Personal foul, hands to the face, 62 on the offense. 15-yard hey, hey. penalty, it's going to be first down. Called against Christian Rodriguez. In a nod to how well the defenses are playing here, especially for Southern in the third quarter, each team has already had four possessions. But Grambling had five possessions already in the third quarter. Southern keeps shutting them down. You've got to think small chunk here. I don't anticipate Grambling bringing the additional pressure they normally bring. Can't get greedy offensively. On second and 25, they get a nice chunk right up the middle out to the 25-yard line. So offensive line moves to the right. And great job by Herb Edwards of just breaking that ball right off to the left, picking up some, some of those yards back. In between exclaiming his dance moves, one of the things he was pointing out was that he's become far more patient as a runner. You know, before, he was a guy who wanted to immediately get the football in advance on the defense. Now, he can delay for just a hair to see where the crease opens up. Gain at 10, brings up second down, 15. Cameron Mackey in motion. Howard from a nice pocket, looks that direction and fires out of bounds. Third down and 15 is next. And this is where 
Randall Menard, their returning receiver who was going to be the focal point of the passing game. He was more of a statuesque target. He's almost six foot four. He was great on the 50-50 on the jump ball. Ended up breaking his leg earlier in the season. They've been without him for quite some time now, but he was really the main target they had who you could throw into a tighter window and think he had the frame to come away with it. Southern's been pretty effective on third down. They've converted five out of ten times. This one will be difficult, third and 15. Free play coming up. Just dumped it out of the backfield. That's Devon Ben. <laughs> now that's how you get a free play. <laughs> yeah. It's the second time today we've seen Howard use good inflection mm -hmm. to draw the Tigers off sides. Would be a gain of 11. Offside, defense, five yard penalty, 33rd down. That was another guy that we didn't see or haven't seen used properly as well is Dylan Beard. He's that bigger body receiver, but that, that you can see his body move. Mm -hmm. It's one of those hardest things. We used to call it a freeze play. You get those D linemen really coming off hard. You want to stall them a little bit and freeze them. So you want to see Austin Howard try for a shot play. He knows the defense is offside there. You can take advantage of that by trying a deeper pass. You don't have to play it safe in that scenario when you know you've got the flag coming. A little more manageable here. Third down and ten. Tigers bring four and knock him down. Howard also lost the ball. Anthony Mullins with the emphatic sack for a loss of nine. This Mississippi State transfer just put everything he had into the back of Austin Howard. Watch him turn the corner here as he comes off the edge. And Jodeci Harris is trying to get out there, but the get off from Mullins is so great. That first step advances on the offensive tackle. You got no shot at that point once he dips that inside shoulder and the burst to finish. And if you are offensive lineman or even a tight end when you have to block, if your shoulders are turned like that, you have no chance to block the end coming off the edge. You're done. No surprise to see the defense that leads the entire FCS in sacks per game with four in the third quarter that way. We knew we'd have the bragging rights coming into this one, but we have a game heading into the fourth quarter with the winner heading to the conference championship game next weekend in Houston. Fellas, all about the defense. There's been pursuit from sideline to sideline from two defenses that have been hungry to make their imprint on a game with explosive talent all over the offensive backfield. Yeah, there's a certain physicality you've been able to see from both of these defenses. And these offenses, uh, Rambling averages 32.2 points a game, where Southern is at 28 points a game. They are way below their averages today. And that's Grambling's leading rusher, Martez Carter. 82 yards so far. You saw him moments ago come out. Uh, took the shoulder pads off, was wincing as he grabbed his midsection. And that would be a big loss for this Grambling offense. And they're going to start out in excellent field position here. Malik Rout. That's Martez Carter's replacement returning punts. 33-yard punt and takes it all the way down to the 26-yard line. And this would normally be where Martez Carter would be making his imprint on the game. We saw him last season in the Bayou Classic go 88 yards to the house. That one closed the show for Grambling as they beat Southern in 2016. And that's a return of 28 yards. He had a chance maybe on the outside. But he's actually running and gets bumped into a big old offensive lineman. But still, very nice play. That's Desherius Flowers backing up Carter. Getting out just across the 25-yard line. Excellent job by Rote. And getting the accolades on the sideline. Lee Castile will get another tackle, big 92. He doubles his, has six on the year. That'll be seven for him. Which he probably, he probably wanted it a different kind of way. Kincaid keeps it this time. Dives just across the 20-yard line, or right at the 20. And he gains five. 
Paul, this is the key now. When you lose a Martez Carter, you still have the ability of Kincaid with his legs. You can tell they are going to be cognizant of what they have to do and keep this clock moving, but also put points back on the board. Kincaid, 17 yards rushing so far, had the nine-yard touchdown run earlier. In trouble now. Buys a little extra time, fires to the end zone. Opportunity missed for the Tigers there. Talk about dropping a dime, and he still was running all over the field. This is just great extra effort. Anthony's been, we've been talking about it all game, about the second and third level of rush, and your receivers stay alive. That was almost still there. You've got to be special physically as a quarterback to be able to do this, not just yeah, the reverse yeah. pivot, but then to regain your throwing mechanics enough to put this level of RPMs on the ball to get it to the end zone from that far away. Caleb Salmon couldn't come up with it. 37 yards out for Orozco. And no doubt about that one. Right down at the middle. Little bit of breathing room for Grambling. Early in the fourth quarter, the Tiger lead out to six. The Bayou Classic on NBCSN is brought to you by the one place that will always be your place, Mickey D's. And by Crest, healthy, beautiful smiles for life. All kinds of highlights from Bayou Weekend, guys. It's the step show yeah. last night. So I was definitely plus 10 pull-ups back in my heyday. Paul, <laughs> Paul Burmeister in your heyday? Maybe a step show or two? <laughs> uh, my next one will be my first. Okay, yeah. all right. Been to it's a few, a and I, I advise you to go because you'll get caught up in the hype, and you'll think you can step <laughs> right there with him. <laughs> you think I didn't see your hips moving at halftime? I was watching you. Hips don't lie. <laughs> you guys, give me a, give me a pass next year. Yeah. We're, if I'm invited take back, in. I'll I'll definitely. There you bring go. It. All right. <laughs> we'll take in all the all the activities surrounding the Bayou Classic from start to finish. An active week. Jamar Washington. Freshman wide receiver takes the knee. And we'll see how the Southern offense now can respond. Defense uh, bent, didn't break there. Now Austin Howard with a six-point deficit. And think about this opportunity. Austin Howard, as a freshman, won the Bayou Classic, had three touchdown passes in the first half, lit the world on fire, went to the SWAC championship game. So three years later, He's lost the last two Bayous. He's the program's all-time leading passer, yards, touchdowns, got all those individual accolades, but he has yet to defeat the Grambling Tigers again, and now he's got the ball in his hands with a chance to do it. Making his 44th start. Takes off his fourth quarter here. That's Edwards out to the 30-yard line, gain of five. You know, guys, you bring up a great point. Dre Joseph was also the starter for Southern for years before he got here. His dad... Dre Joseph's dad got him involved in football. He was his baseball coach. So he was made for these kind of moments around the Bayou Classic. It drops in the backfield, trying to cut it out to the right side, but Edwards goes down after a loss of two. The last two great Southern quarterbacks, Joseph and Howard, from a small town, not too far from here, Edgar, Louisiana, about 2,400 people in that town, and a lot of them here in person watching Austin Howard, hoping he can do something to get this Southern offense going again. Southern five out of 11, converting third downs. This one is third down and six. That's a jittery defense right now yeah. from Grambling. You saw him there with a little blood in their fingertips. They want this third down. Blake clock down to two, down to one. Gets it off in time. Out to the left, excellent catch. Cameron Mackey hauling that one in. That was all hands there for the gain of seven. And the accuracy of the pass to hit Mackey in stride where he can keep his shoulders turned towards the sideline and his momentum can carry him towards the first down. It's a great ball from Howard. Edward cuts it back just across the 40-yard line for a gain of four. Anthony, your point also, he's on the other hash, throwing all the way to the other hash. Nice reach out, and Mackey, once he catches it, knifes up the field to pick up that first down. He had only three receptions the freshman did in September. He's had 14 cents coming into this game. And a great conversion there with the fingertips to keep this drive moving. 
Devon Ben in at tailback, and this is flipped out to the tight end, Beard. His second catch, tried to fight, just barely got across that 45-yard line. Gain of six yards. Now, Charles, I'm interested for your thoughts on that, because as the catch comes in, this is another opportunity where he could have kept his momentum, Dylan Beard, going towards the sideline. He kind of turns back to the inside. There. The minute you stop also, all everything is coming from you yeah. from that other side. But that's where you really step on the gas. When you're that size at 6'2", 256, you should just be able to run over that defender. And when you stop, that's what gives him a chance to come and corral you. Bringing out the chains to see if Beard picked up the first down. Oh. And yeah, it looks like it's just enough. Another Southern first down. So much on the line here for both teams as we've talked about throughout the broadcast, guys. The winner moving on to play in the SWAC championship game. The extra little effort there from Beard getting in his team the first down but you also have a nine game winning streak for Grambling six game win streak for Southern and you go bigger picture than that the Tigers have won 24 conference games in a row the last time they lost was a game you just talked about the freshman season of Austin Howard they lost here in the Bayou and haven't lost since good job by the defensive line of not going Austin Howard's record in the SWAC is 27 and 6. He knows how to win football games. Inside give there. Out to the 49 yard line. That's backup tailback Devon Ben. Take a look at what's happened in the SWAC so far this season. One glance at that, you understand what's on the line here. The winner moves on to play Alcorn State. You want to be in a position to win it all and play for the next. The next step, which is the SWAC championship. Rolling out to his left. Good throw and catch. Not enough for a first down. Brought in by Jamar Washington. Freshman walk-on. Picks up three. And it'll be third and three. Earlier, when Southern started to go tempo, that's what stopped Grambling from moving around, from stemming so much pre-snap here we're not seeing that type of tempo from southern but the grambling defense not as much pre-snap movement in their front seven and alton howard starting to carve him up ben motions motions out of the backfield wanted to go there and comes back he wanted his backup tight end dennis craig and couldn't hang on well and the other thing they've done is a play go far to the left far to the right far to the left he looks to the left or right again right and he has craig craig just can't hold on to the football looks like he jammed his finger or something but that was an opportunity right there to pick up that first down gotta have those if you're southern fourth and three guys you agree with the call to punt it away i do because of the amount of time remaining in the game to me the next possession for southern if the score still is what it is once you cross midfield, it's four down territory from there. I think right now, field position is the right call. Malik route deep to field the punt again. He's in for the injured Martez Carter. Took a 28 yards last time. Fair catch from his own 18-yard line. Punt of 30 yards. 10.36 left in the fourth quarter. The Grambling offense up by six. Back on the field on the other side of the break. Wednesday night, the puck drops for an Eastern Conference clash as Tampa Bay takes on Boston. Lightning and Bruins. Wednesday night rivalry, 7.30 Eastern on NBCSN. Pretty good rivalry going on right now. The 44th Bayou Classic. Rambling in a tough game. Looking for its 25th consecutive win, only winning by six. Martez Carter, the top running back for Grambling. That was moments ago. He came running out of the locker room to cheers. Remember, he went pads off a few moments ago and now he's back and on the field and this place erupted when it happened it sounded like a home game for the Grambling Tigers the fake to Carter Kincaid keeps it nice job by the Jaguar defense getting him just before he got to that 20 yard line tackled by Tyron Nash you guys one other point too both of these teams are coming off bye weeks which allowed them a little bit of a healing process where you don't really get healthy completely in November but also the physicality and the things they were able to do in their practice week to get really ready for this game 
And there's Carter with it, cutting back to the 21-yard line, his first carry since he left with an injury, and he picks up one yard. Senior out of Monroe, Louisiana, had that turnover and didn't want to go out. Uh, and clearly, he just came coming out, and like Anthony said, this, I thought this place was going to, the roof was going to go off. Willis Reed at the Garden. I mean, this place got loud the way he sprinted out of their locker room. Third down and seven. We'll see what Kincaid can come up with here. He's now dipped under 50%, completing just 12 out of 25 passes. And he's off that time as well. So bring up fourth down and seven. His rhythm's off. It's interesting because earlier in the game, we saw him throwing in rhythm. He'd hit the third step or the fifth step. Ball would immediately come out. Now he's double clutching a bit. Devontae Kincaid holding the football longer than he needs to because DJ Clark was up the hash just beyond the, the chains and had an opportunity for a first down reception. Kincaid didn't see him, didn't throw it that way. The guy that's been kind of quiet is Aaron Tiller. We have not called his name in a while, and they've, they've really done a nice job of bottling him up some. You would think that's where Kincaid would really thrive. Uncharacteristic inaccuracy. He had six consecutive games over 60%. And now he's 12 out of 26. Danny Johnson, fair catch from his own 46-yard line. A punt of 33. So now it's time for the Southern offense to respond once again. The defense has done a tremendous job keeping that Tiger offense in check, only 20 points. They came in as the number one offense in the SWAC, averaging just over 32 points per game. And the offense has been getting a little bit better as the game has gone on. Remember, they threw the interception on the first play of the game. Now they're just six points down, 9.26 left in the game. Austin Howard, 18 out of 28 so far. Right back to the air. And that was a catch for a moment by Dylan Beard, but couldn't hang on. Austin Howard is lacing footballs to receivers. He, he's been doing so throughout the entire second half. Yet another drop here on the back shoulder throw. Dylan Beard comes from off the ball. Proper read. Great pass. Just yet again, not able to haul it in. There's playmakers on the outside who need to play at the level that their great quarterback Austin Howard's playing at right now because he's dealing. Nice defense by Derek Dixon. And a nice run by Edwards. First down to the 40-yard line. That, that looked like Herb just said, okay, y'all, let me get the ball and take this right up the middle. My offensive line, you come off on people's second level, you get there, you knock them down, let me go at them. Operating at a fast pace. Edwards off the left side, picks up one. Keep in mind, the Tigers not used to being in this kind of game. They lost to Tulane 43-14 to start the season. But then in the nine consecutive wins, all but one have been by double digits. A tight game in the fourth quarter. Here in the 44th Bayou, plenty of time, and Howard just fires that one away. Bring up third down and nine. Really nice job of coverage by the Grambling secondary because whenever they get in that trip look, bunch look, it seems to confuse the defense. And that time they covered everybody well. He had to get rid of the football. I like what Southern's been able to do when they've been in 12 personnel. That one running back, two tight end look. It's third and long here, so they're not in it right now. But if they pick up the first down, look for two tight ends to return to the field. Third down and nine. If they pick up a few, we'll see if this is indeed four down territory. Inside of nine minutes and down six. Howard stands in and fires. Excellent fight there by Beard to get a couple of extra. Down to the 32-yard line. Tackle made by Montrell Meander. Gain of seven. This coach probably told him, okay, when you catch this ball, you, you finish the run. And nice job by Beard of getting down. Let me go and try to get this first down. Now, all you have to do is keep fighting and try to get that. They're going to go for fourth down because it's such a short distance to make. Fourth down and two. The Jaguars will go. Play clock ticking below 10 now. Ben is the tailback. 
They're going to get a timeout call or a penalty. Southern is called timeout. And Dawson Odoms wants to talk over the options. Huge play coming up. Fourth down and two. We'll have it for you when we come back. The rest of the Bayou Classic presented by Louisiana Seafood. Shaping up to be a great finish. Grambling only up by six. The winner moving on to the conference title game. Fourth down and two right now for the Southern offense. Anthony, going to let your quarterback keep it, throw it, or give it to a running back? I like Austin Howard in the pocket. I, I see one running back on the field, and I think they've had their most success out of 12 personnel. I only see one tight end of the lineup, but you do see this bunch formation that they've had success out of with two players off the ball with a free release. Devon Ben is the tailback to the right of Howard on fourth and two. So now what they do is they got to check with me, and they can go and change whatever they looked at from the defensive perspective and try to attack it differently. To the air, and nice and easy underneath. Excellent call, better execution. First down for the Jaguars, Jeremiah Houston. It actually was 12 personnel. I missed Houston being there at the back end of that bunch. So this is what they love. They got their back. They got their two tight ends. You utilize some of your bigger body. So even if Grambling does come up and press, if the window's condensed, you've got a more physical presence out there. Well-timed ball from Austin Howard. Pretty good trust in the most experienced quarterback in your school's history. That's Austin Howard. Good calm in the pocket. And now it's first to 10 for the 21. And Ben off the right side down to the 19-yard line. Try to go unbalanced line and just really get to the boundary. A lot of times you see big plays in the boundary when you go unbalanced or you just go with tight ends. That time they used a tackle over, put the big tight end, Jeremiah Houston, who's 6'6", and just tried to pound Grambling on that run. They went with it a lot in the first half with Jeremiah Abbey with trade sides. Hadn't seen it as much in the second half. Defense was able to react to it well there. Howard under pressure. One-handed catch, then falls to the ground. Great effort by Houston. Couldn't bring it in. Dennis now Grambling deciding they're going to heat up the pocket again. They've been laying back, kind of doing what we don't see Grambling tend to do that much here they bring six rushers a couple of them drop back into his own concept but deandre hoax puts a nice lick on austin howard and where he vacated that's where howard throws whenever the quarterback knows the blitz comes here i know behind that you're going to have a man trailing you if i hit you right you have a chance to run and pick up big yardage once again we'll see if they are in four down territory if they pick up just a little bit of this third down and seven Sets it up underneath to Ben. Nice move to pick up the first down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Southern. Screen game slows you down. If you're the defense coming off and you knew Grambling wants to come after you hard, what do you do? Call screen game. Let those big guys get out in front, and then you go block them up, and you have a back like Ben who's made, able to make a few people miss. You pick up the first down. A couple of terrific calls there to pick up Keep the chains moving there, back to back. Going to a tight end and then underneath to their back. First and goal. Southern hasn't knocked off Grambling in the last three tries. The trips to the top of the field with the Dylan Beard. Around the right side goes Ben down to the seven-yard line. Late penalty marker comes in from the defensive backfield. Christmas with the tackle. Oh, 76 on the offense. Still first down. Skyler Prohl and that one hurts. Yeah, you can't have those penalties when you're moving down the field. Big man just grabs him up, locks him up right there in the middle of your screen by the 10-yard line. Yeah, that was a WWE move. Never good to see first and goal when you're outside of that 10-yard line. From the 18. Howard steps up. 
Gets quite a bit back to his tight end, Dylan Beard, gain a 10. Big body, you use your body, and now Howard knows where those big guys. We said red zone is where they like him. He's just going to run a route, go to the defender, turn. Look, the big body. I'm going to get my body inside of yours, and I'm going to have my quarterback. I'm going to make myself available for the catch in the first down. The diminutive receivers in the lineup are your young guys. A bunch yeah. of true freshmen on the field on the outside. Counting on the tight ends now, those bigger bodies. Seniors, juniors, sophomores having multiple bigger bodies who he's feeding. Tenth play of this drive coming up. Wouldn't be surprised to go, and build, go back to Beard. 13 career touchdown receptions for the tight end. Here comes the blitz. And that ball knocked down. Christmas was in there. Mullins as well. Paul, you called it. He was looking for Beard. Beard was going to do a pivot route on his man and he was coming open late and Austin Howard knew he had him. Such a fun defense to play in <laughs> through Darius Christmas. Really, everybody in the front seven, they get to do so much. Yeah. There's so much movement, so much prowling around both pre-snap and then post-snap. You have no idea where number five is going to be at, and he'll make you pay time and time again. Third down and goal. Edwards, the tailback to Howard's left. Moves over to his right. Comes back to his right. Touchdown, Jaguars. Dylan Beard. The unsung hero in a lot of these things are your blitz pickups and guys that are able to just make sure you keep your quarterback clean. Dylan Beard with a nice catch. He'll get all the stats and the glory, but when you turn on the film, it's going to be all the things that you've been able to do to make sure Austin Howard is clean in that pocket. And how about this? The Jaguars losing the last two times to Grambling and throwing an interception on the first play of their offensive game. Coming back to tie it up at 20. A chance to go up by one. And that's exactly what they do. Let's check where the pass rush comes from in the pickup in the backfield. Right here where it happens. There's Dearis Christmas. He's going to probably be the defensive player of the year. He'll blitz. And as it happens, and as it happens, you'll see the running back, Herb Edwards, come and meet him in the hole one-on-one. -on -one. Right there. Bang. As he gets it, just giving enough time to his quarterback, Austin Howard, and then taking advantage of the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Look at the accuracy. Right there. Back shoulder again. Big tight end, as you know about Charles Arbuckle making it happen. Well, you got to have guys that are unselfish. And Herb Edwards has been running the football. We didn't see him in, a lot in the first half. He came back. But you do just enough. And then Dylan Beard with a nice catch in the end zone against Grambling, a team that you've been trying to knock off the last few years, and they keep knocking you off. And this is what Odom said. Coach Odom said, this is what we have to do. This is where, why we're here. That's seniors. Stepping up making plays. Austin Howard starting his fourth Bayou Classic. Dylan Beer starting another Bayou Classic as a senior. Herb Edwards, first year as a starter, but a senior who's been on this stage before. Dylan Beard, five catches today. Leads Southern. He had five total Bayou catches in the three seasons coming into this. And Salmon looking for some open room. Cutting it back to the left. And here we go. Salmon with a big time return when his team needed it the most. Gain of 41. Short kick initially, and then he is able to move over to one side and look at there's no coverage backside. And then all his guys turn. Let me give you a convoy. Where can I help you go? Let me pick up a block so you can try to take it to the house. When you get out of your lanes on the kickoff team, there's so much juice flowing through your veins. You want to run down. You want to make a big play. But especially on the backside, once that return man starts to one side of the field, you have to be in a full position, and Southern got out of their lane. You can't have a short kick there either. you got to kick that ball as far as you can. Kincaid with excellent field position, keeps it himself. And brought down just as he got to the line of scrimmage. That's Aaron Tiller, big number 94. There's Nate, and there he is. And, and we talked about it. Kincaid just doesn't look as comfortable as he did in those first three quarters. And yeah, the first half, he was 10 for 17. And second half, fellas, he's only 2 for 9. See if he can get something going here. Steps in. 
just missed his top receiver, Daryl Clark. And part of what's thrown Devontae Kincaid off is that we see a lot, both up front and in the secondary, guys laying back. The defensive front, sometimes three-man pressure, but spying to the field side. In the secondary, as Graham calls a timeout here, in the secondary where Southern has been so known on the back end for their press coverage, especially in situations like this, a lot more laying back, more bail five. looks from their defensive backs. And it's really put him in a position where he's okay. I have to try to find this, but also watch the rush. When you see the rush coming, they're in their lanes and they're staying. Even with, if there's stunt game or whatever, somebody's going to replace the outside. Somebody's staying inside. Somebody on the other side. He just is not comfortable. You see they run an X game there, but they're still able to work through and keep him in the pocket. And all that being said, would have been a difficult catch from yeah. D.J. Clark, but... Devontae Kincaid threw a ball that hit him in both hands, so that was an opportunity yeah. to move the chains. Did a nice job of fitting it just behind the linebacker in front of yeah, the safety. Yeah. yeah, the other thing, too, guys, they haven't really thrown. He hasn't thrown those short passes to kind of give him a chance to get that two for ten or two for nine back moving again. And just 12 for 27 for the game now. Big down here, needing ten. We're going to left the whole time and fires a strike. Wow. Can't throw that one any better. That's the Geis. We always talk about if your quarterback is struggling, give him a throw that he can make. That's one he's probably made a million times since he was a little kid, and he threw it on the money to Geis. Quentin Geis known as the fastest receiver there on the intermediate route, showing great footwork. Great job of getting one foot down and also hanging on to that ball that had a lot of heat on it. First and ten from the 29. Kincaid. Dangerous play there, kept it, flipped it out to, to Daryl Clark, who tipped it up. Lucky to have second and ten. This is the RPO staple where the quarterback just runs down the line and gets the ball out quickly. Kincaid with too much juice on that pass. He's charged up right now. Kincaid back to the air. Underneath. Penalty marker comes in. Good effort there. Would be a gain of eight. To Jordan Jones. Personal foul. Face mask. 54 on the defense. Half a distance to the goal. On that first down. Whoa. Another big mistake by uh, Deron Johnson. We saw him earlier in the game on the edge. He was the one who missed the block that allowed the block field goal for Southern in their field goal protection here. They call him for the hands to the face up front. Huge penalty. If this does come down to a field goal, Grambling looks to be in good shape there. They have the top field goal kicker in the conference in Mark Orozco. He's two for two today. 16 for 19 on the season. This is Carter right up the middle. Touchdown, Tigers! That was almost too easy, guys. Carter comes in, and they hand him the ball right there. No one to stop him. Very, very nice run by him. Systematic dissection of the Jaguars defense by Devontae Kincaid in this Tigers offense. That was impressive. And he didn't look comfortable at the very beginning, but then once he got going, it's just like, okay, the light bulb came on. Cortez Carter almost like he knew someone up top was talking about maybe kicking a field goal. <laughs> look, touchdown run happening right here. In the middle, your big guys need to be the ones to make it happen. William Waddell pulls across. This is just a power play, so the down block happens as well by Trent Scott. He's an all-swag performer, and getting vertical is Mr. Excitement to give the Tigers the lead. Anthony, you bring up a great point. Back in the old days, you would have a fullback, but your guard kind of becomes your fullback when he folds around like that. And he, if he stays where he is, which he does, he's going to take on a linebacker. And then the secondary, you see that safety come behind and get caught up in the wash. That's why it was so easy for Grambling to score that touchdown. 
The touchdown probably feels all the sweeter for Carter. Remember, earlier in the second half, left with an injury, went to the locker room. His return was in doubt, came back to a lot of cheers from the rambling faithful, and now puts one in the end zone. And his team leads by six. The injury, the fumble, some moments earlier in the game that Martez Carter would like to have back in his last Bayou Classic, but he may have made the play that gives his team the game. Caleb Salmon had the big return from Grambling to help them go ahead and see if Southern can return that favor. This is Jamal Washington. Scoops it up. Goes down to the 13. Jamal just can't get it. It's like a shortstop or when you're playing baseball, bad hop. But he was able to clean up after that. Tackle. Tackle made by Percy Cargo. And Austin Howard has been steadily bringing his team back. 23 out of 37. Very efficient. All the more impressive when you consider his first ball of the day was picked. And now he's got 320 left and a six-point deficit. Playing in his fourth and final Bayou Classic for a shot to play in the conference title. Flips it out late. And a nice job of going up to grab that one by Catalan. Gain of seven. He had to climb the ladder for this one. Because Austin Howard couldn't step into it. Ball floated on him. Great catch from Catalan. Look at Austin Howard directing traffic. Pre-snap, setting the protection. Back to the air and fumbles. And Grambling has it. Brandon Verner recovers that fumble. The junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. That was pressure coming on Austin Howard right before he passed the football. And it might have been Varner. Varner does this. He gets the sack. Does a, a perfect imitation of Lawrence Taylor. Gets the fumble recovery. That was a very nice play. It was such a great pass rush from Varner, working through the upfield shoulder of the guard. And then, after he gets through that upfield shoulder, able to finish, it looks like the arm to me was not yet going forward of Austin Howard. So I think that'll stay ruled as a fumble. Signature play for that Grambling defense coming in, having forced more turnovers than any defense in the league with 26. Add two more today. That one was huge, and it's first and 10 from the 16. And there's the Southern defense. That was champion making the play. Uh, check the right arm of Austin Howard as Varner comes in to make the strip. Our motion going back, and it, it's right there, split yes. second, Charles. I, I think Southern it was. Called their second time out. I don't think it was quite going forward yet. This what do you think? I don't think so either. Out. I think he was still going back, and as soon as Varner hit him, it made the made it look like he was moving that arm forward. Yeah, it was very close, but Varner with those long arms, you see him right there, able to hit that ball before he's even able to fire it. And football's loose in the air, yep. empty hand going forward. That's one of the points officials tend to look for. <laughs> and let me underline just what a great pass rush that was. I mean, the situation in the game, it's very simple. Yeah. You know, Varner's not a guy, when you study him on film, that does a lot of very tricky pass rush moves. He's like a Mariano Rivera type where he's only got a couple of things in his toolbox. But there you show very effective as an interior rusher just powering off the ball through the outside shoulder of the guard and then pad levels what got him home to finish. And usually you expect that from the outside, but it's your interior guy from the defensive tackle position or area that was able to get there so quickly. Southern now. Southern with only one timeout remaining. Carter looking for something up the middle. Gets out to the 19-yard line. That was a gain of one to bring up third down. Now, if you're grambling, you're in a position where you want to get points, clearly. They're going to use as much time as they can to take it away. I think they should have called a timeout there. Southern has one timeout left. I think it'll depend on the result of yeah. this play. If you get the third down stop, then you utilize your last timeout. Rambling would be in position with a field goal to make it a two-possession game.
Kincaid keeps it himself, stumbles out to the 18-yard line. And now here it comes. Yeah. Now here comes the timeout. Southern has called their third and final timeout. Well, you're hoping for the ability to stop the clock because you only have one timeout remaining there. You're hoping for the ability after the third down where now the drive has come to a head where you force them to have the clock stopped and attempt a field goal after your last timeout's been burned. So critical field goal as well. Injured yeah. Tiger on the field, guys. William Waddell. He had the huge block on the last scoring touchdown from Martez Carter. The sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida. The Tigers have to be confident what they have in their field goal kicker, Mark Orozco. Today, he's two out of two, 42 and also 37 yards out. For the season now, inside of 40 yards, he's 10 out of 11. And this one would be from 36 yards out. It's interesting because Orozco wasn't in the lineup for Grambling last season. He'd been injured by the point they got to the Bayou Classic. The year before, he was an all-swack kicker. He's experienced. He's been on this stage before. He's performed in big moments. Yeah, this one from 36 yards out for the season, seven for seven in the 30 to 39 range. Uh, he's now eight for eight. Huge three points because his Tigers now lead by nine. Little gesture to the southern sideline and fans as he knows he just made it a two possession game. Couldn't get any better than that. Nice kick. Only clean hole, clean snap, clean kick, everything. And Roscoe told us the other day he sees the Bayou Classic as a win or go home playoff game. He was treating it with that mentality. He came through in the clutch for the Tigers. Talk quite a bit, guys, about how the Grambling defense came in as the most disruptive in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. They create two more turnovers today, and those turnovers lead to a touchdown in the first quarter, and then three points here. So ten points set up by the most disruptive D in the conference. Paul, you bring up a great point. They forced multiple turnovers in six of their games, and three games where they forced four or more turnovers. Against Alcorn, they, like Alcorn State, they had four fumble recoveries and three interceptions. So <laughs> they wreck havoc with the football. Southern knew that they had to play a clean game as far as keeping the ball away from them. Danny Johnson from three yards deep. Doesn't make it to the 20, brought down to the 16 yard line. And so now Austin Howard is up against him, trailing by nine, 136 left, and no timeouts remaining. He's been second team all swack the last couple of years. Just happens to be that the Grambling quarterback was the offensive player of the year in the Southwestern Athletic Conference each of those two years. But this, one of the great passers we've seen in swack history. Not much time remaining, but the right arm of Austin Howard gives them as good a chance at a comeback here as any team could imagine. You've got a defense, though, that's shown the propensity to get after the football. He has to protect it in this drive. Goes to the short game early and has that one dropped by Cameron Mackey. One of his three freshman wide receivers to bring up second down 10. And when they brought those three receivers in, Mackey and Jamar Washington and Catalan, they all just started making plays for this offense. Yeah, Howard's percentage yeah. went up 10 points. Yep. Yards per game went up over 100 yards when those freshmen came in. Plenty of time right there. Ball knocked away. And making the play for the Tigers. Jeremy Carter from his linebacker spot. All my, all my years of offense, when you throw late, that late, that's a big chance for somebody to undercut and take it back to the house. It's interesting that this Tigers defense still playing with a downhill mentality. It's a two-score game, just a minute and a half left. But they're not laying back. They're not going into prevent mode. Still pressure being brought. Still press on the outside. This time they rush three. Plenty of time for Howard stepping up. 
his second interception of the game. Diamante Johnson. What did Coach Fobb say? We play how we play. And you brought up the going full bore. Our defense has to create turnovers. This is why this team has been so good. Plus 19 coming in. Now plus 21 after that turnover. The zone eyes in the backfield for Diamante Johnson. To the field side as a corner ball sails from the right hands of Austin Howard. And that's the moment that could potentially close the show for the G-men. Actually plus 22 because they've had that fumble recovery they had, and now that turnover there. A rambling player on the field right now. And unfortunately, that is their leading tackler, Diarius Christmas, number five. He has just been dynamic. Talk about the tackle total, but against Alcorn State, when he was SWAC Defensive Player of the Week, he had 14 tackles. And we watched him today. He was all over the field. You talk about sideline to sideline. His rush ability is also one of those things that he does very well. And folks who watch Netflix, they've seen him for the first time on Last Chance U. He's a player who's featured there when he was at the junior college level. He's been with Grambling a couple of seasons now coming out of the junior college ranks. But let's see. It may have been a non-contact injury. He's being helped off the field now. See him coming from the top of the screen, hustling to the ball as per usual. He's up there towards the top left and then just sort of, sort of starts to pull up lane. We'll wish the best for the area's Christmas. He's in line for so many accolades. When they won the SWAC championship last season against Alcorn State, he was the defensive player of the game in the SWAC championship. A team that prides itself on making plays in the other team's backfield. The team leader in tackles for loss and also total tackles. Meanwhile, the best formation in football if you're a quarterback, and that's the victory formation. No timeouts left for Southern. And the Tigers, this was a tough one. This one was in doubt, but it's going to turn into their 25th consecutive conference win. Really, I really like the effort that Southern gave, but that Grambling defense just we, we saw it show up the very first play of the game and one of the last defensive plays of the game where they just really make it difficult for you to get comfortable on offense. There's a reason Broderick Fobbs, in the three years he's been the head coach of this team, has won the SWAT Coach of the Year award all three times. He may be in line for a fourth this year as they make yet another trip to Houston to face Alcorn State. As for Southern, Austin Howard in his 44th start, most in school history, had his first pass intercepted today, and his final pass picked off. In between, he was pretty good. Let's talk about his, you know, a lot of times guys, and he had guys like Ellis Johnson, he mentioned and others, but he said, my dad. My dad was the guy that really helped me with my understanding. And that's how a 25th win in a row in conference looks. Third consecutive in the Bayou. All the while punching their tickets at next week's conference title game in Houston against Alcorn State. The Tigers are your Bayou Classic champions once again. I believe that's the two best coaches in the SWAC meeting at midfield. Robert Fives. After losing the first time he and Dawson Odom faced off back in 2014, he's been able to win the last three. A lot of healthy respect between these two programs. Play every year, and a lot of these kids grow up playing against each other, playing with each other in high school uh, on the same teams, and it, it's just, it just shows the respect that they have for one another. How about Devontae Kincaid? A very different approach throughout the season for the way Kincaid utilized his personal skills not quite as explosive didn't take quite as many chances with the ball because the experience around him at wide receiver was very different in his second year after joining from Ole Miss as a transfer his mother Latanya Boyd watching this very closely Lewis Johnson on the field with a very happy head coach Broderick Fox and coach here surrounded by his family and a big moment for him and the Grambling Tigers so coach 
How big is this win? How tough was the challenge to get to this moment today? Well, I mean, you know, anytime you have a, a Dawson Odom's coach team, you're going to get their best shot. You know, uh, you know, my vote is for him for coach of the year. I thought he's done a heck of a job. You know, he lost a lot of key players and they just keep rolling, you know, but but this is probably our best win since we've been at ground. And, you know, the adversity we went through in this ball game, you know, not playing as well as we wanted to. But, you know, having to resolve, you know, to, to really fight back when we were down, you know, and make those plays in the end, that's what counts. And that's what champions do. What do you have to say for your defense today that started with a turnover, first play of the game? You add two more turnovers to the many that you had for this season. Well, you know, Coach Todd and the defensive staff and the players, they've done an exceptional job all year long. And, you know, and, and at the end of the day, you know, we're a team and they've done an excellent job. And, you know, they were on their heels a little bit, but they fought back and made the plays when it counted. So I'm on your sideline and I see Martez Carter over on the bench, shirt up, ice on the left rib cage, in pain, looked like he was done. How in the world did he go in, come back out, and then score the final touchdown to help push you guys over the top? Well, he's from Monroe, Louisiana. Is that it? And that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you guys have won this game. You're on your way to the SWAC championship. How do you think this team is in terms of mental, physical poise for that, that challenge, which will be next week? Well, it, we're battle-tested, you know, and we've been through it before. And there was no wavering on the sideline, you know, when we went down one. Um, and, you know, you're going to be tested in different ways, and you're going to have to win in different ways. And, and we did that tonight, and, and that, that speaks volumes about our recruiting and our players, our coaches, and all parties involved. Speaking of tested, I've got to ask you about your quarterback, Devontae Kincaid. He had a hot start. Things kind of got quiet late. What did you see in him as he led the team today? Well, he's, he's, he's our leader, you know, and, and everything that we do, you know, has a lot to do with him, you know, and he and Martez Carter. You know, being able to get up off of that bench and get back in there and play, and then having the quarterback to make plays like he made, I mean, that's what it takes. We're a good team. I was talking to Eddie Robinson III earlier in the game, and he said that you are you emulate so much Coach Rob and what he represents, and that's why he's back around. What's it mean to have the responsibility of this team, knowing what Coach Rob uh, left here as a legacy, to lead it the way you are right now? Well, I don't know about that. You know, <laughs> I wear a size 11 and a half, and I think his shoe was a size 20. So uh, yeah. I don't know if I can fit those shoes, but I appreciate the comment. I appreciate all that he's done for me, and I appreciate Grambling. You know, uh, Grambling is just an awesome place. You know, when you look at what we've been able to accomplish, you know, not too many teams can play in front of 70-plus thousand, have a chance to play in a bowl game, graduate your athletes, and then experience the things that we've experienced with the venues we play in. You know, Grambling is a place to be. I have to do my recruiting pitch right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Congrats on today, and good luck for next week. Thank you so much. Paul? Hey, Lewis, the way his team played was a, a pretty good recruiting pitch are winning their third consecutive Bayou Classic. Singing that alma mater feels extra special after you knock off your top rival to earn a spot in the conference title game. We just heard Broderick Bob say that was his best win yet. He's been the head coach for four years. What impressed you the most about him? He's won quite a few games, but this one felt different because there wasn't the talent gap this year that there was in last year's Bayou Classic. We've seen a Grambling team that's been ascending in recent years, but right on their heels has been Dawson Odoms and Southern. This game overall had those swings, those haymakers going back and forth. He talked about those young guys before the game on the field. He said, Arkansas Pine, Pine Bluff got us in position. It seemed like that today. They really had to challenge themselves when they got behind, had to keep finding ways, and this team was really good at coming back every single time they needed to. A lot of really good plays made by the Tigers. We could only pick a few, though, for the McDonald's plays of the game. Guys, what did you see? I'm seeing the run game. We saw a Willis Reed-type moment for Mr. Excitement. Martez Carter came back into the lineup. His offensive line opened up a gaping hole and gave him the lead late in the game. And Brandon Varner with this great inside pass rush move, getting to the quarterback before he, his arm goes forward. Austin Howard can't quite get there. It's, and that was an excellent play by Brandon Varner. 
Let's go back to the field and check in again with Lewis Johnson. Well, it was quite a defensive performance today, and Brandon Barner was right in the middle of it. Very, at the very end, the sack fumble play that you were involved with. Take us through that and what it was like to execute, bring the team on around the victory. Yes, sir. Um, Coach Ty had been on us all week on technique, run it right, and I saw the look that I had been looking at all week, and I took it, and I got the sack. That was incredible play. And to see the emotion on this building, to see that was lifting your team, what did that mean? It meant everything to me. We, The whole Grambling, we just been working hard. I just want to thank Coach Todd, the D-line, Coach Foss, everybody. We're going to do everything we need to do. And you better thank this running back right here, Martez Carter. Oh, was there was a moment when you were on the sideline there in pain with those left ribs, and you looked like you were out of the game. How did you come back and score that final touchdown we saw? I just went back there and told him just to kind of tighten my ribs up kind of wrap me up a little bit and maybe I can sustain the pain but the rap was too tight so I just put me two ibuprofen's back man I just pushed forward and told coach man put me back in he said I can't but at the end of the day man big time players make big time plays man I'm a big time player and you did that congratulations appreciate it all righty Paul and Lewis yes he did make plays run game and the receiving game over 100 yards of total offense and also two touchdowns final thoughts on what you saw here today guys family affair for the g-men Broderick Fobbs as a running back for the tigers two touchdowns two bayou classic wins nice to see the way this program has been able to flourish he's able to do it with the team that knows how to be physical they know how to fly around the football when they need to make plays they always seem to make them 30 to 21 the final congratulations to grambling Bayou Classic champions for the third consecutive year. But it was certainly a doubt late. Grambling trailed 21 to 20 before coming back strong to finish and win 30 to 21. For Anthony Heron, Charles Arbuckle, Lewis Johnson, and our entire crew, I'm Paul Burmeister. Thanks for being with us. Tremendous weekend in New Orleans ends with a Bayou Classic victory for Grambling. Up next, Bridgestone Skate America, the ladies' short program.